and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the October 21st Selectman's Meeting. Uh, first, we are going to have oath of office. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we want to thank you again for allowing us to take a few minutes out of your meeting uh, for a very important promotional ceremony. Uh, as you know, we had a vacancy when Lieutenant Gidley retired. Uh, Sergeant Reno was promoted to lieutenant, and this is the last part of that promotional process. We just had an extensive uh, grinding testing process for the uh, nine folks that took it. And we have somebody that we want to present to the board tonight uh, for promotion. So I'd ask Vitaly Sorokins to step forward. Good. Okay. And our town clerk will administer the oath. Very good. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, first, I'll read the sentence. To the town of Hampton and the county of Rockingham, to Vitalis A. Sorokins of Hampton, New Hampshire, in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of police sergeant in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Vitaly A. Sorokins as police sergeant of said town. And upon taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 21st day of October 2019, Fred Welsh, town manager. And if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. Yes. I, Vitaly A. Sorokins. I, Vitaly A. Sorokins. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Vitaly A. Sorokins. I, Vitaly A. Sorokins. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. Papal and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All the duties encumbered on me. As police sergeant. As a police sergeant. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Folks, if you would, uh, congratulations and move upstairs for pictures and what is a busy agenda tonight, so congratulations. we'll stop wearing on the right. Congratulations, we look pretty wise. <laughs> Chief? Yes. Do you have 
have badge pinning classes? You could have a little, you know. We don't do it that often, so, <laughs> you know, you, you wait a few years before you get that promotion, so. Moving on, we have uh, public comment. Uh, anyone wishing public comment this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to announcements and community calendar. Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, nothing this evening, sir. Regina? Yeah, just a couple things. I just want to let the public know that we have two surveys going on right now. We have the uh, Parks and Recs Assessment Survey that's available on the town website. And we also have the Hampton Master Plan Survey, which we have Jason here tonight. And we have to go to publicinput.com for this survey. Is that correct? It's not on the town website? That's my understanding. Okay. And the other thing <coughs> is I got asked by um, Karen Rains to read this. There's a program, Squalist Sunday, at the Tuck Museum, November 10th from 1 to 4. Hmm. Showing the video, Saga of the Submarine Squalist, from 2 to 3, with producers Karen Rains and Mike Garland talking about the making of the video. An exhibit of the USS Squalus memorabilia is on display at the Tuck Museum Military Room. The submarine Squalus sank off the coast of New Hampshire on May 23, 1939. 33 men were rescued and the ship was salvaged and later recommissioned as the USS Sailfish. She was a Portsmouth Naval Shipyard built machine and many from Hampton have a connection with the submarine. Karen Ransom Morales. And that's all I have. Mr. Yeah, Adele. one thing that Tuesday night at 7 o'clock at the police station, any North Shore, North Beach residents meeting with the chief about the noise and the cars up there in the evening. So that would be a good thing for people to go to. And Halloween's coming up. I, I don't know what night it is, but people ought to be very... It's the 31st. 31st, very, very careful about driving it during that evening. Mm. And I believe that it's not just the noise, it's also about people speeding. Yes, and, and all the infractions that are taking place yeah. <coughs> and uh i'm not really sure because i haven't talked to um renee how his uh halloween bash went the other night but i saw him working on it um quite a bit and he seems excited with all the input yes <laughs> so i'm sure maybe we'll hear about it tonight so that i'm sure was a great thing next we move to the approval of minutes october 7th yeah, I have one uh, correction to the non-public session. It says here that uh, discussion ensued with selecting loosely repeated objections she has voiced in the past about having Jamie Sullivan become town manager. And it says that she said Selectman Barnes had some of the same concerns. That is not why I abstained from the motion. The reason why I abstained from the motion was because it had previously been discussed by this board in a public meeting that we would not be discussing the contracts again. And I didn't feel comfortable doing it in a non-public session, and that is why I abstained from the vote. So I would appreciate if that could be put in the minutes. I make a motion that we approve the minutes with that amendment, with that correction. Or <coughs> second. I'll second. All those in favor, unanimous. Moving on to the consent agenda. There's a cemetery deed a MS 535 audit report and the raffle permit um, from the professional firefighters. I make a motion that we approve the uh, and I'll consent. Second it. All those in favor, unanimous. Appointments, first we have Ellen Lavin, tra town treasurer. Good evening. Good evening. I am, I'm assuming all of you received my letter from last yep. week, and you I'm did. here tonight to actually uh, seek your approval of my nomination of Matt Clark as Deputy Treasurer. I think that's an excellent choice, and I'm very happy to make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor, unanimous. Does right. he have to come in and be sworn in, Mr. Chairman? My assumption is yes. And Everybody I just talked does. to Shirley, yep. and if she's not here Wednesday, uh, okay. then Cheryl can do it. And then we'll be off to the bank. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank that's, you very much. That's your favorite place. Yes. Second, we have uh, Jason uh, Bashar, <coughs> town planner. Update on the master plan. Hi, Jason. How are you doing? Okay. 
So I just wanted to take a little bit of time this evening just to give you an up, all an update on the master plan uh, process that we've been doing over the past several <coughs> months, and uh, as well as a little bit on the preliminary survey that, that the group has been working on. So to begin, I'll mention that on June 19th, the planning board began holding master plan sessions at its second meeting of the month, the third Wednesday. Uh, the representatives include the planning board's selectman representative, which is Jim, uh, one member each from the board, uh, the ZBA, the Conservation Commission, the HBAC Budget Committee, the SAU 90 Superintendent, and two Hampton residents. Um, and I'd also like to note that we have designated the beginning of each master plan session for public comment so that we can obtain feedback from residents and other stakeholders in the community. So we encourage people um, to attend and share their thoughts with us at these meetings because that feedback is going to be critical as we continue forward with this process. Uh, in total, so far, we've had five sessions. Um, I believe they've all been uh, very productive sessions. I know that Rick represented the HBAC as well. I mentioned Jim earlier. Um, so I just wanted to note some of the accomplishments so far from those sessions. Uh, we formed a master plan steering committee, which consists of the planning board members plus those representatives previously noted. Uh, we provided an overview of the master plan, master plan process in New Hampshire which included Master Plan 101 presentation by the Rockingham Planning Commission back in July, and that presentation's on the town's website if people wish to go back and see it. Um, we reviewed examples of master plans from several other communities to evaluate the different formats used and help to determine our direction. Uh, we reviewed materials from the 2013 Vision Subcommittee to determine what items of interest or concern at that time continue to be relevant today. Uh, we are also working with in working with the New Hampshire DES Coastal Program, we reviewed an RFP for the vision and coastal management sections of the master plan, which is to be released this week. Um, $35,000, as you know, was allocated earlier this year uh, for the coastal management section of our master plan through a larger NOAA grant um, that was awarded to the coastal program earlier this year. Uh, DES uh, recently committed an additional $10,000 so that the vision section could also be prepared in conjunction with that same grant because there is overlap between those chapters, the coastal chapter and the vision chapter. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that's come along through this process that's, that's very uh, helpful to us. Um, we prepared a rough first draft of a warrant article for the March 2020 um, ballot that we talked about last week's meeting. Uh, that's currently being refined and expected to be in final form by December. And led by Ann Carnaby, who is our planning board vice chair, um, and with assistance of the Rockingham Planning Commission, uh, prepared a preliminary master plan survey, which is available online now. Um, I'm just going to walk through. Um, Ann had prepared a list of talking points that for people in the group to go around to different boards and committees, and I'm just going to walk through those as part of that master plan uh, survey process. Um, so, so what's the, the purpose here? It's the, doing the survey, um, publicinput.com um, backslash HMPS1. There was some talk about what the address was earlier. So I'll say it again, publicinput.com backslash HMPS1 for those who want to pull it up. Um, and that's the beginning um, of updating our master plan is compare, preparing that survey. In it, um, people will share their dreams and visions of a better place to live and work in the future of our town. Our updated master plan will begin with goals which come from your vision of a better place to work and, and be written, live and work, and be written by experts who use documentation and statistical analysis to support the need for funding from state, federal, or other agencies. There has already been an award of $35,000, as I noted, for the coastal management portion and $10,000 for assistance with the vision portion. Uh, vision and um, land use are two uh, sections of a master plan that are required by law in New Hampshire. Other sections, of course, you, you should uh, obviously include in the current plan has done that, but those are the two that the law requires. Um, why are we doing this? It's to have a current, well-written and organized master plan that will help us raise money for larger infrastructure projects like roads, bridges, uh, trails, things of that nature, and, and other types of uh, land use uh, projects and others that benefit the town. In taking the survey, um, what's it like? It's in the same format as the cable committee survey. For people who've taken that survey, they would uh, recall that. It's forgiving in that you can change any answer that you don't like and, and you can redo that. Uh, each section um, of questions is a comment box for 300 words or so for more thoughts um, from each respondent. 
as you respond to an item and click enter, the survey will show you what others have entered on the same item. And you could actually take the survey more than once, but we don't encourage that. I mean, that's just how, how a technical uh, glitch in it that, that happens. Um, so the next steps after the survey is, you know, the efforts we're doing now so that we can get the Warren article together to raise the additional dollars for the expert um, research analysis and data collection that we need to prepare our master plan. Um, and in, a quarter, in order to accomplish this, the warrant article for additional funding will be on the ballot, as I noted, in March. Um, we've talked about, with regard to the survey, some publicity campaigning and how to get this out to people to know that. So through the website, um, through visiting different boards, committees, places in town, maybe senior centers, things like that. So we're, we're looking at a broad a spectrum of places to look at so that we can get that word out there. One other thing that we're doing, and Fred and I had talked about this, was a distribution through the email list. We had talked about that. And, and Fred had noted that if we wanted to use the email list beyond the typical scope of land use and zoning and planning matters, that it would require your approval to do so. So I don't know if that would be something that the board would want to consider or would be interested in, um, just so that there's a, ma a mass uh, distribution of that. I make a motion to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll second. Excellent idea. Okay. All those in favor, unanimous. Okay. Um, so that's the survey. As far as next steps. Um, Jason, is, I, is there a link to the survey on the website? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there is. I'll, I'll get to some of that, too, in, as okay. I finish up. But yes, there is a link to the survey on, on the front page of the website. So you can click on it right there, and it'll take you directly to it. So for next steps, we're going to finish and submit our warrant article by December. Um, work with the coastal program to interview and select a consultant for the vision and coastal management sections. We anticipate December and January would be the time frame for that. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to prepare an RFP for master plan service to address services to address land use and other sections such as recreation, natural resources, economic development, transportation, and so forth. And all work on the master plan update is anticipated to commence in March or April of 2020 so that we can hit the ground running after the March vote. Consultant um, selected for the vision and coastal management sections would be required to team with the consultant for land use and other sections, if it is in fact a different consultant, to establish concurrency and develop a manageable integrated master plan. So just in closing, I would note um, that the documents for the, from the master plan sessions that we've had thus far and going forward are available on the town's website, hamptonnh.gov, under departments. You can select planning and then master plan sessions 2019. <laughs> Uh, more documents, as I said, will be added as we continue forward. Um, we would encourage residents and other community stakeholders to complete the preliminary survey, which is located, as I said, at publicinput.com backslash HMPS1. Um, I will leave some information on the table for anybody in attendance tonight that has um, the link and some a um, little bit about the process. Um, we would also encourage everyone to participate in this important process and appreciate the voters' support for the Warren article that will appear in March 2020 ballot. And if the board or the public or anyone has questions, they can always contact me in the planning office. I'm more than happy to help. So that's what I have. And um, I think that, you know, we constantly hear, uh, oh, I didn't know about that, or, you know, I didn't see it discussed. This has been discussed for months yes. and months, and uh, really ever since last year. Right. And this is a good time to, uh, you know, so it will be fresh in your mind from when there is, when it is, when it is time to vote, you'll get to see, you know, you'll maybe understand it better than trying to read the Warren article. That's right. So this is a great time for people to tune in or come in. Come and to say the meetings, something. absolutely. And, yeah. and there's a public comment portion on the beginning of every agenda. Mm -hmm. So we encourage yeah. people to come and speak. And, and it's very interesting. Mrs. Wolsey? Great job. I've watched all of your meetings. Uh, this is long overdue, and you really need the help that this will give you as the town planner. I, I'm very happy to see this, and I hope that we have great support at the polls in March. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Great. Gina? I agree the same. Great job getting this together, and I hope that it works well for you. And will having a working master plan, do you think, help us a little bit as far as getting maybe grants? Oh, no, no question about it. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. one thing that's very clear. A lot of times when you see grant opportunities, it'll ask you about your master plan and what section is applicable and, and how yeah. current is it. So it, directly relevant, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. Waddell. Good job. Thanks. 
And we'll move, and I totally agree. I've been part of it, you know, and I hope my replacement came last time. He wasn't there, but oh, well, I'll speak we'll, uh, to him. We'll talk to him about okay. that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so you can move on. Very good. Yeah. J Jason, do you no, have any idea how high, how high oh. the new master plan is going to be? How many inches? It, it won't be as thick as the one we have now. I can I, assure you that. We're, we're looking for something in a definitely consolidated format that people can actually pick up and read and use and pick out the points and very nice. implement very nicely. Yeah. Good. When I said move on, I didn't. I thought you had another thing to say. Oh no, that, that <laughs> yeah, was no, no, that was everything for. Uh, He's just thank you to so get much. You. you do a great job. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> next, we have Christy, finance director. Good. I was hoping when we put this on the agenda that I would have had a chance to speak to DRA in regards to the tax rate setting. However, I have not. Um, but I worked today and the end of last week to come up with some of my, usually when I sit before you, I have spoken to DRA, but I've also calculated what my estimate of the municipal portion of the tax rate is, which I have done. Yeah. And it is looking, these are only estimates I want to reiterate over and over again to everyone because I haven't spoken to DRA. We still have to do revenue. She hasn't given me the rooms and meals tax revenue number. And I was talking to Fred earlier today. We're also still waiting, I think I said, on two um, water pollution uh, grant money that comes in from the state yearly too that we haven't seen. And Fred and I couldn't recall if that was in their budget or not, but I'm hoping it is because we've gotten two since their budget, since the state's budget passed. But as of right now, I have the municipal rate with the new property valuation coming in at $5.89, which is down from the $6.27 huh. for 2018. So that's good news in the sense that we always like to see it go down. I know the board has set it as their goal to keep it at least level if they have to use unassigned fund balance to do that. Um, in this situation, we are below. So I guess before you guys tonight, um, if we want to have a tax rate prior to your next meeting, I don't know if you guys are comfortable taking some actions. I'm hoping to hear from DRA within the next day or so. The things I, I need to know, a couple of things from the board first. Do we want to use any of the unassigned fund balance to offset the tax rate? If you guys would like to hear all the numbers in regards to that, I have my best projections on the unassigned fund balance at this time and a breakdown of the hmm. amounts that DRA likes you to have retained a fund balance. I yeah, also- I would like that. Okay. So um, you have the MS-535 from the audit and the unassigned fund balance at the, as of 1231 was $8,859,734. Of that in March, the um, voters approved $581,273 in warrant articles from the unassigned fund balance. So that would leave us with an end of year unassigned fund balance of eight million two hundred and seventy eight dollars two hundred seventy eight thousand four hundred sixty one dollars um, when we set the tax rate last year in 2018 we were at ten point seven two percent which was seven million seventy nine thousand four hundred seventy seven dollars seventeen percent retained is eleven thousand two hundred twenty seven $11,227,851, 10% is $6,604,619, and 8% is $5,283,695. We've always liked to stay between like this 8 and 10%, I believe, has kind of been the goal that Fred and I have been comfortable with. So being at the 8278000 we're, you know, a little higher, but probably going to be right about that same 10% is where we were last mm -hmm. year. We won't know that once again until we get the tax rate. Mm -hmm. um, overall for the tax rate, my best guess, I don't have all of the um, mm -hmm. definite numbers from the schools, but I did talk to Nathan at SAU 90, so that's a larger portion mm -hmm. of the schools for Hampton. And my best 
estimate at this time is the tax rate will be right around 16, maybe slightly below that overall, without the precinct. The precinct is a separate one, and I don't have those numbers for sure, but I will say they do have all of their things, and because Steve was confirming that last week when I was at the budget committee, and he's, they've turned all their documents in. They're just not as easy for me to pull out on the DRA website. I was trying to pull out as much information as I could so that I'd have numbers to give to you guys tonight in case you mm -hmm. did want to move forward and take some actions. And so how, that much, could, how does that compare to last year? The tax rate? Uh, last year, it, overall, it was $17.02. And I have it right, I have it just under 16 right now. Um, but like I said, my numbers for the schools haven't been yeah. confirmed. So I don't want to get everyone's hopes up, but I'm fairly, I think we're at least in that ballpark. And Fred, what, what is your suggestion? My suggestion, Mr. Chairman, is that we do not apply anything from the surplus to the tax rate. Mm -hmm. and instead, we fund articles necessary to, to get down some of the $13 million worth of deferred maintenance Good. on our infra infra infrastructure system so that we can stop appropriating money mm -hmm. hand over fist to do these things off the tax rate. Good. And when, will we be, when would we be in a position to do that? Well, we should be able to draft warrant articles for this meeting to expend funds to do that very function. So, like at what date do you think we'd be doing that? Well, I think we'll, we'll probably be able to do that sometime uh, late November, beginning of December, to get the warrant article stretched out so that we know exactly where we're going. Mm -hmm. So do you think that this would um, help um, uh, <clears throat> defer, you know, make the tax, because there's so many people that have their increased evaluations so do you think that this, is there any way to even this out a little bit so that people? Well, we're almost, what was your estimate, $2, almost $2 down the tax rate? A dollar, a little dollar, over a dollar. A little over a dollar per, per thousand. thousand. So that's a and how will that affect the people that are getting the, that have increased evaluations? <laughs> Can you? Give us any info on it's that. It's like three cents. Because this is a big talking point. Yeah, it's about three cents per hundred thousand dollars right now. So depending on so if their evaluation went up by a hundred thousand dollars or even two hundred thousand dollars, that's about six cents. And being a dollar, just over a dollar, it'll level. It should level out fairly nicely. I mean, it depends on what their value went up, but mm -hmm. on yeah. values between let's see yeah. three. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be several hundred thousand before it would have a large impact. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Wolseley, did you want to comment on this? No. Regina? I think this sounds, I know it's, I know it's just your right. estimates, and I appreciate everything you've done. And I also want to remind the public that the town portion is the only portion of the tax rate that this board has control over. Right. right. And that's gone from 6.27 to your estimate is? 589. 589 so yeah. that's pretty good. And I'm good. hoping it'll be a little, I'm hoping my estimate's a little high because I don't have the rooms and meals. I always lowball that number. So mm -hmm. that could be another 50,000. So like doing a that. penny and a half more, you know. I mean, it's only and a penny and a half. it was lower but last year also, wasn't it? I, my estimate was a little over last year, yes. I think uh, I estimated I, 632 last year and I think it came in at 627. But I mean, uh, the town rate went down last year. Yes, yes. it did. Just like yeah. it did this year. Correct, it did this, go down. Yeah, this so, year it'll be a more of a significant jump down though because this is... Mm -hmm. Good. You know, okay. Mr. And Waddell. I have another comment to make. Yeah. And also, um, I've talked to people whose tax valuations have increased substantially. And they've, you know, they've met with MRI and they had all their issues addressed. And while they're concerned that their taxes might go up, they also are very concerned with our infrastructure around here, except, yeah. except especially the roads and the yep. sidewalks. Yep. So I think if we can take Mr. Welch's recommendation, I think that will work out quite well Good. for Hampton. Mr. Waddell? I agree with Fred. I, you know, I think the, the rate's gone down, which was good, and it went down for two years now. Valuations went up, but then mm -hmm. you, your house is worth more than it was before. So if you sell it, you get more money. And, uh, so, and I think it should go to infrastructure. I think we have a lot of infrastructure that needs yes. attention. Yep. So I agree 100% with the town manager. Yeah, and I feel um, similar, um, and I just uh, was uh, out of state, and I'll tell you, the roads are bad everywhere. Mm -hmm. right? You yeah. know, it's hard to believe. As bad as they are here, they're not as bad as they are in some places. Uh, that's true. So we're looking forward to getting those type of things done. 
Did you want to continue? I have one more thing in regards to the tax rate. Oh. Um, it sounds like the board is wishing not to yes. use an assigned fund balance. Um, mm -hmm. The municipal aid, we received that last week. It was $116,000. $219.33. It has two purposes. It has, it can have two purposes. Mm -hmm. One is to be used um, against the tax rate, mm -hmm. or it can be used on a project of some sort. The board would have to hold a public hearing and stuff, but when I go to work with DRA to sec set the tax rate, I do have to know what the board's wishes are with that 116000 if it's to be expended on projects, I think that's how Fred and I are feeling that everyone's leaning, um, mm -hmm. or if it's to be used <coughs> to um, lower the taxes. So. Yeah, so you agree with that, Fred? I do, Mr. Chairman. We have sufficient funds with this money mm -hmm. to re re replace the sewer on Elaine, uh -huh. which needs to be done very badly. It's an old sewer line. It's an old um, Good. system that needs to be replaced because it's in disrepair. This would get that off of our docket. It's been something that's been held now for several years because other things have come up, but it needs to be done. Mrs. Wolseley? Excellent. Regina? Total agreement. Yeah, in effect, if you're, if you're doing it for infrastructure, you, you, you're putting it against the tax rate anyways because yes. that's going to come into the tax rate at some point if you don't do it. <coughs> right. That's correct. So in effect, you are using it for the, for the mm -hmm. purpose that it is. I agree 100%. And I agree also. You need a motion on that? I was going to say, Fred, do we want a motion for them so that we can move forward and set the tax rate possibly this week? Uh, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, we, we will use the funds for infrastructure improvement. Yeah, I'll and then no one. Uh, no I'll one. second that. All okay. in favor? Right. Unanimous. So I'll be here next week with the Public Works budget and my monthly financials, and hopefully at that time mm -hmm. um, I will have a tax rate for you guys to sign off on so we can move forward. And the tax collector will be happy too. <laughs> I'm here all night. Well, Mr. Chairman, well, <laughs> Christy is here. There's no sense in having her sit here forever. Can we I have to sit here anyway. So I have to sit here and watch all the other departments. Anyway, oh, all so right. Okay. I would recommend saving all mine till the end since I I was going to speed much. you we along. Thank you. <laughs> um, next, we have general government budget reviews. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we recommend that you start with the, the, the worst of all possible things, debt service. Uh, like we have a change, an opportunity not to do this, but um, actually legally the town does not even have to put it in their budget. DRA is going to raise it whether we do or we don't. Hmm. Um, so I would suggest to the board that in fact you provide for the payment of the town debt uh, regardless of how that's done, and that, that that be approved as part of the municipal budget of the town. And that's um, Appendix D has all the whole debt schedule for okay. anyone who's interested in looking at it. Which appendix? Appendix D. Oh, good grief. Oops. Ah, I found it. Yes. Okay. The important things. Questions, Mrs. Wolsey? No, I just want to know what we need to do here. So the debt budget is, total budget with interest is $2,650,242. Yeah. So there isn't really a whole bunch to, like Fred said, it has to be there anyway because we've all, everyone's voted and we've signed off on all of that. Um, mm. I think the new one that's in there this year that was not on there last year is the Church Street Force Main, those mm -hmm. payments. So that's mm -hmm. the new right. the new item there. We did retire some very small the payments addition. in um, 2019, but we took on the Church Street, and it does not have the phase one of the wastewater because that project is in mm. the... Beginning stages, yeah. so that debt won't be on for a couple more years. My best guess is 22 or 23, probably, for to start paying back on that. And yeah. the Church Street Force Main is SRF. Yeah, I'm okay on my debt service page okay. when I reviewed, so I don't have a problem. Regina, any <coughs> questions? Thank you, Christy. I'm Jen, good. Christy, yes. what, what percentage is the debt of the total budget, the debt, debt service of the total budget? Uh, I don't have those numbers down here. Um, we thought you had them memorized. No, I do have them. Uh, Regina, do you have that? I have the uh, that I the increase. Really? I have okay. the increase you amount, one hundred forty-eight five forty-two. Yeah, it's two million six hundred fifty thousand. I can calculate that for you and have it when I come back up. 
Okay. What percentage of the whole budget it yeah. is? Yeah. I'm here. I my budgets are at the end, so I'll have that number for you. And when what we're percentage done. do they recommend that you keep it at? Isn't there recommended? Yep, that's in the audit, and I definitely don't have that with okay. me. But we are well below. Below. I think we're at eleven point something percent. Don't quote me on that, but that is in the in my MDNA, which is part of the audit, <laughs> and I will be sending that to you guys in the morning. Okay. But um, I think we're okay. are allow. I think we have like eighty nine percent available. Okay. I believe. All right, and, and and also, do you have the percentage of the total debt to the budget? But you can get that yeah. later. I'll give thank that you. for you while I'm over here. All right, thank okay. you. I always have to think of a question you're not okay. ready for. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. And now we have the building and code inspection. Oh, and our favorite building inspector. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Kevin. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm here to present my uh, proposed 2020 uh, department budget and bottom line on that right now, moving forward after the town manager's review is $216,031. Mrs. Walsey. Yeah, and uh, you need to read the line uh, underneath that, Kevin, because you are taking in more revenue than yeah. you spend on your department. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you were to compare my proposed budget oh. just to where I'm at so far this year, the end of September, which is what's that, three quarters, mm -hmm. leaving us a whole other quarter to go, I have taken in... Two hundred and fourteen thousand eighty-two dollars. Yeah, shows so, two thirty-two on here. But yeah. Yeah, and she's way ahead of me with that because when I get this, numbers are still going upstairs. Yeah. yeah. You know, even after we close that month out, you know, we're taking in money constantly. So. Yeah. Excellent. So I would trust her number. Because <laughs> I like it. Either way, you're bringing in revenue to the town and doing a great job. Thank you, Kevin. Regina? Yeah, I have the same comment as Mary Louise. His budget's slightly over 110000 and so far through 930, he's brought in $214,000 yeah. in revenue, so you've well paid for yourself. Thank you very much. And um, Mr. Waddell? Thank you. How do you feel about your budget? <laughs> I'm very confident. Confident? I mean, you feel good about it? I do. I do. Um, I'm, I'm just taking a look at um, what my budget was for 2018 and what the target amount was at 75%, and we're, <coughs> we're right now operating at about 67 and a half. So, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with it. And... Again, if, if we got into any kind of issue with like supplies or something like that, I do have some other line items that I could probably, you know, go from one pocket to the other, staying within the budget. Okay, thank you. So you think um, your needs are being met? Say it again? Your needs are being met. Everything that you have there that you need, yep. you have. We looked at our numbers close when I um, put them in line item, every one of them individually and I work with Paula on that and uh, what we submitted I think there was only a couple of changes to what I had submitted mm -hmm. and that happened had to do with gasoline and yeah I think part-time wages or something like that it was just mine thanks Kevin for all that you do you're welcome yes. thank you thank you do we, are we we're not voting on these Fred or uh, that's up to you mr. chairman okay we can I I'll think move. we can vote I'll move that we accept his budget figure for 2020 I would rather vote at everything yeah. at the end. At the end as well. Oh. Okay. Make That's a difference. Fine. It doesn't matter either way. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Next, we have um, welfare. Welfare. Yes. Is she here? She has a commitment tonight. Mr. Chairman says she couldn't be here. Uh, the welfare budget is projected at $63,110. That's down 1.12%. This is the second year in a row that her budget has decreased. We're anticipating a small amount left at the end of this particular year. So she's doing a very good job of keeping this trim. Mm, I hope everyone's needs are being met because 
as long as they can substantiate the need, we meet it. Yeah, because there's subs every you know all you see is so many p places where there's a uh, lot of people. Yes. On the Fortunately, we're not one of the bad places. So that's something mm -hmm. we have to be thankful for. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah, and Mrs. Wolseley. It's fine. I don't have any problem. Regina. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Moving on uh, to the assessing. Assessing department. Good evening. Good evening. Trying to find you in this mess. There it is. So, uh, uh. just a question: Do we? Do you want us to go over the entire budget, or just the contracted services portion, or did you want well, to discuss? Why don't I, why don't I start with the entire budget, and you can do the contracted portion? Yes. Okay. Uh, the budget as approved is uh, $284,213. That's down 5.14%. The expenses, et cetera, are pretty much uniform. They stay that way all year. Um, we are looking at uh, upgrading some computer systems, but other than that, we have our contract with MRI uh, that takes care of our actual assessing of buildings and, and notices and appeals and all the other good things that come about that are statutory. So I'll let you folks explain that one. Um, so the contract with services portion is $155,250. Uh, currently it's a breakdown uh, regarding an increase to 48 hours per month of an assessor on site. Um, there's also, to, to, for the building permit review, uh, a line item of $6,250. Um, and that's gonna cover an estimated uh, uh, number of properties. We, we estimate 250, that would be for the more major permits, new construction, you know, major renovation, that type of development to, to do those permits. Um, and then, um, I believe that's it. So that's the breakdown of the, um, well, actually mm -hmm. litigation expenses. So the whole contract service is 155. The, the stuff I just discussed, I'm sorry, is 55,250. There is a litigation expense. I believe that's the one that's been there, Fred, uh, the $100,000. Yes. Yep. That's to handle the appeals and work with the experts, the expert reports and things like that. That's actually over the legal. But. That part of it's in the legal <coughs> budget. So, yeah. Mrs. Wolseley. No, I don't have a problem. Regina. Wait, I have a, so the breakdown 155, 250, is that, that's just for MRI? No, yes. I'm sorry. That was, that had, the litigation is listed right up against the, below there. So um, it's actually 55,250. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. For... And 100000 is for litigation. Right. Correct. Okay, so MRI is only 55250 yeah. Yes. Right. And yeah. that's going to be an assessor in the office for 48 hours? Per, per month. month, yes. Per, per month. month. Yes. What yes. is it now? Uh, 32 is what oh. we were contracted for before. So it's, that's an increase. Also, last year we had done about 140 building permits, so we're about doubling how many building permits we did last year as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. So actually the, the, the total assessing has gone down. Actually it has because we don't have a full-time paid assessor now. Right, and, th and, and it's still operating fine. Yes. It went through the revaluation pretty we well. Yeah. Things came off pretty well. They did. We believe okay. so, yes. We and that you were, you were fine with it? I'm very happy with it, where everything's moving along projected-wise. This is exactly the way it should. Uh, we are going to issue the tax bills. We'll see how many people decide to appeal their taxes. Okay. If it's similar to the revaluation we had a couple of years ago, we, we won't have very many. I'm just, mm -hmm. this was supposed to be the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Guess it isn't. Are you, are you, We're going to do this in two years again because of statute. Yeah. Okay. Oh, two years. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I would have to say that from what I can see, it's the most successful assessing that has happened since I've been a selectman. Um, I feel that the input that comes from the people that I talk to um, 
seems to be very good. Everyone feels uh, uh, respected and that you have worked with them. One thing I find is when I'll be talking to people, they're uh, very quick to say, oh, my, my assessment went up $100,000 or whatever. And I'll say, well, you know, you, it's, there's a, been a time that you could have called up and talked about it, and you still have until uh, when you want to file an appeal, if, you, if that's what you're looking for. So it isn't over yet. But then they say, well, actually, I did get in touch with them, and it was lowered. It only really went up 30000 but they really only wanted to tell me that it went up 100000 And I've had it happen more than once. So I think that you're doing a good job. We appreciate it. Do we, uh, any more questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming in Thank tonight. Um, next we have legal. Good evening, Counselor. Good evening. So the uh, budget proposed for the uh, legal department over uh, last year's is uh, up 1.55 percent. That only reflects the um, wage increases approved by the board utilizing that portion of the monies that were already under budget. And so um, provided that we don't have um, uh, some trials that utilize outside counsel. Um, I'm thinking that the figures I presented to you here are, are accurate for mm -hmm. 2020. Do you want to talk about the figures? Uh, yes, the figures, um, there are two portions of the uh, legal department budget. One is the uh, inside portion, which is the first half here, uh, which is uh, run uh, $134,373, and that is um, actually what the cost to run the entire legal department, including benefits that aren't reflected here, is less than $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, the legal expenses, uh, we have $1, it, this is the outside portion, we have $1 on for legal expenses, for uh, damages and judgments. We have not had those uh, in many years. Uh, the outside counsel fees budgeted is $30,000. Um, that's a sum that in, in the last few years has been uh, overspent, not because of frequency of use of outside counsel, but rather cases that had been assigned to outside counsel for various reasons coming to fruition mm -hmm. uh, or getting closer to trial, rather. Uh, then for collective bargaining, we have basically a placeholder figure of $5,000. Uh, that figure years ago used to be 35000 but because of the utilization of in-house staff, mm -hmm. uh, including myself, uh, basically zero has been spent on that. Um, the uh, other labor costs is uh, $10,000. That is depending on usage, uh, too. Uh, this year that will have been slightly exceeded at, by year's end, but in most years is, is, is not involved. It just, again, is situational. Um, litigation expenses at $5,000. Uh, this year we had several items involving uh, experts and uh, transcripts to be prepared that caused that to be exceeded. Again, it's a situational <clears throat> item rather than a regularly recurring item. And so uh, that portion of the budget uh, I anticipated is a fit about approximately $50,001. And, and so uh, that gets you to the uh, default budget figure of $184,374. Thank you. Questions? Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, I have no problem with the budget. I did read your confidential memorandum, and, and I have no problem with that. Um, I would like to see us 
try to clean up, please, Aquarian, the Well 22 and the Wigan Way stuff and the uh, shoveling out of the hydrants. Do we have any hope of cleaning that stuff up fairly soon? Uh, it, that's... Um, <laughs> I know. One I'm of those just, matters is I'm that... I'm just the, hopeful. The, uh, the, the cleaning out of... Uh, the, the, the clearing of snow uh, that Aquarian should be doing of, of its own privately owned hydrants. Can we get our shotgun out? Yes. Oh, all um, right. It's, it, that, that's a subject that was uh, uh, a subject of a complaint that we filed with the Public Utilities Commission, which the Public Utilities Commission uh, declined to even hear. And so that's part of an appeal to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh, the New Hampshire Supreme Court has yet to decide whether to hear our appeal. If it did decide to hear the appeal, uh, those typically take approximately um, mm -hmm. a year to get mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, the point I think will have been made, and it may be that next year when the rate case is filed by Aquarian after eight years of non-rate yes. cases, that subject has the chance of again being brought up. Yeah. Uh, regarding the Well 22, uh, that is currently at the PUC, I'm sorry, Department of Environmental Services right. for permitting and is the subject of comments by um, experts. I think we'll get a decision on that fairly soon. I hope so. Uh, the Wigan Way matter is one that's been pending for a number of years. Yeah. Uh, was tried in front of the Water Council and a, a written decision has yet to come out. Yeah. And then I, I think that uh, that may take a significant more amount of time too. That'd be crazy. You'd think somebody would be able to step up to the plate and resolve it. But thank you for what you do and I have no problem with your budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I have no problem with the budget, but I'm just, you know, I can't help but look at the numbers of the 930 actuals for outside council being almost 300% and the five-year actuals at almost Christie's five-year average expense is over 75000 So you are confident that if certain things get settled <coughs> that the 30000 is going to be sufficient I, for that I, I think in a... In a um, Obviously, the, out, the outside council cases are assigned with the board's uh, authorization, and they are situational. As I say, it's not th that there are more cases like that being handled. Right. It's that they are coming to a point of fruition, which is where you spend a lot more mm -hmm. money. Uh, I do think it's, it, it, there's a very good chance that, uh, that that may recede. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I just got to piggyback off that. I mean, the outside council fees, 30000 is not realistic, is it? Uh, not if you're talking uh, the actual trial of cases. I think in, in past years, that n when we didn't have these few cases coming to fruition, right. that is a realistic number. Right, mm -hmm. but it's... But it's it, it, it really it's depends on whether or not certain cases get resolved. Yeah, Good yeah. Man. That's a lot of that's that's a lot of depend. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, I just want to point out the collective bargaining. You know, from thirty-five thousand dollars down to zero, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, other labor costs. Now, what are the other labor costs again? What the, what? Other labor costs are when we have specific uh, matters involving uh, employees in one way or another, where outside counsel is consulted. So, mm -hmm. so like when we have a, uh, an expert do yeah. a power plant evaluation? Or uh, no, no, no. The other labor costs there have to do with, uh, say, if there are grievances. Okay. Yeah. Or contractual matters yeah. uh, that are not collective bargaining matters. Okay. That's where you have uh, sometimes outside counsel is consulted. Okay, and we haven't had very much of that at all? Um, mm. This year we have, we have had some. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ap approaching, uh, possibly exceeding by the end, the 10000 figure you've got there. Okay. And the litigation expenses? Uh, again, that has, that's directly related to the litigations ongoing. Uh, mm -hmm. Those costs are made up in large part for transcripts of, of the hearings that we did yeah. do, yeah. Um, as well as uh, uh, expert on the um, uh, uh, Well 22. 
Okay. Yeah. And, and damages and judgments, you have that at just a, a placeholder. Pretty much, so yeah. So what happens if we lose? Where's that money come from? <laughs> well, uh, judgments um, obviously have to be paid in some way. Right. And that's uh, against the, uh, uh, the uh, general fund. That's where that comes out of. Okay. Okay. Uh, in some for for the tax matters, we have a, a, an ongoing uh, reserve yeah. uh, to cover those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, Jet, I only would like you if you could just give us a ballpark of what was the type of money that we were spending on outside council before. I think it was around forty-five thousand. Where would it have been that high? Um, it, it varied by year, uh, going way back. Uh, it, it really depended on the types of activity yeah. that was going on. Uh, in the year 2005, we had some uh, uh, an extended string of uh, grievances and other matters, which lasted for about five years, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it, then it went way down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that if if in a, in a in a year where you don't have those types of things going on, I think the 30000 is realistic, actually. Yeah. So, you know, it has been low because we've been mainly using, instead of using a lawyer, we've been using our assistant town manager, Jamie Sullivan. Uh, <laughs> correct? Well, it's, there's a combination of things that occurred when my uh, second person uh, passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly, uh, Mr. Sullivan's use in the collective bargaining has made a very big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, he's taken the lead in that and done a, a great job, and I'm there as, a, as an assistant as much as anything. Uh, and re so he's the negotiator rather than hiring an, a, an outside attorney negotiator. Mm -hmm. uh, the second piece is that uh, Christina Osman in Fred's office um, at does a wonderful work with me on contracts, both on developing invitations to bid yeah. and mm -hmm. the contracts themselves once the bids are awarded. Uh, that's a tremendous <coughs> amount of help to me. And so those two pieces. And also I have a, a, an assistant who's, who's very good yeah. uh, part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, she's certainly not a, a file clerk. Yeah. <laughs> she has skills that go way beyond that, is very dedicated, and uh, enables me to get a lot done. Good. Yeah, and I'd like to thank uh, a shout out there to Christina Osman. She does a great job. She's constantly working. Mm -hmm. She uh, is an amazing person yeah. for the town of Hampton. Yeah. Sure. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's it. Thank yep. you. Um, moving on to the town clerk's office, and she's eager, sitting right in the front row. <laughs> Good evening, Shirley. Good evening. <clears throat> so you, you have the figures that were given. Um, before we start, I just wanted to mention I need to make a little bit of a change in the figures that were given to you. Okay. okay. And. Um, you may or may not know, um, recently our new employee has given her notice, the one that we've recently hired, and um, the assistant clerk. So we're going to be hiring again. When this was done, I, I was hopeful that we would have all our positions filled and trained and so forth, and um, was hoping that I might be able to increase some hours and make a little bit of changes. Right now, I don't think that's the right time to do that. I think we need to concentrate on getting the positions that we have, the hours that we have filled and um, trained and so forth. So I don't want to make that change right now mm -hmm. that I had thought that I wanted to make. So just to give you an idea, um, I would be taking the one assistant clerk back to the um, 21 hours from mm -hmm. the 24, the increase that was proposed. Yeah. And then the other one back to 17, the, that was a 21 hour mm -hmm. um, proposed. The difference when you figure all those numbers out would be an, um, 
decrease of $4,291 for that um, part-time wage section. Do you want to give us your figures at all? Do you want to... I'm sorry? Do you want to let us know some of your figures or to, so that people at home know? Um, I mean, your, um, your final figures there? Um, the, well, the, the town clerk budgets um, with that adjustment is 225549 And we have the voter registration port, portion of the budget. Um, which is six six thousand two hundred and forty one, and then the um, election administration, and as you know, this coming year is going to be a busy election year. Yeah, we um, have four elections coming up, and so big part of the increase in this budget, uh, well, it will be due to the fact that we have the four elections, and that's something we don't have any control over we have to have the elections right. that we need to have um, so that being said um, one other thing I would mention I didn't happen to call out when I gave uh, this out is that the ballot clerk wages have been at eight dollars and seventy five cents um, for a number of years and with years. some discussion with the moderator and um, so for we, I put in for ten dollars for for the ballot clerks for the different positions. So that was one of the other increases that I made, um, and I think pretty much the rest of it speaks for itself. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you anyone might have. Okay, Mrs. Walsley. Okay, I'm going to ask for a little, ex a few extra minutes here because I have a couple of concerns that apply to the town clerk and the tax collector. The town clerk and the tax collector are elected officials. They have a right to ask for um, whatever wage they think is appropriate. We have um, been paying a deputy town manager and this year his salary will be over $87,000 for 32 hours a week. I'm looking here at the town clerk's elected official wages and it shows 63245 and the tax collector shows 59391 You two <coughs> officials are elected by the town. You're not appointed by anyone. We don't have anything to do with bringing you in. The taxpayers vote for you. You don't work 32 hours a week. You don't work 40 hours a week. You are responsible 365 days a year for what goes on in your offices. And what goes on in your offices in, it has to do with money, 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 money. We would be in terrible shape if we did not have upstanding elected officials doing the job that they are doing now. Both of you are important, very important to this community. I think given the current circumstances that your wages are way out of line, I would like to see both of you come back and give us a more realistic approach. I don't normally ask for more money, but I'm going to say that I think you should be compensated as independent elected officials. Only you know what you go through managing your office, watching the money, it would be a catastrophe if either or both of you were not handling the money properly. You are the heart of the money and the revenue and the income and the taxes in this community. I am insulted that we are paying over $87,000 a year that's not part of part -time, our budget. To a part-time 
I think you're out of Deputy, line saying I'm, something I like that, Mrs. I'm Walsley. Expressing myself. Well, I think you're out of line. No, I'm and not. You don't out need of to line be mentioning. Because you, I am. You an need to wait and talk about that well. at another time. You're I out of line. I am an elected official. You as are well. out of line. This is I the budget for the town clerk, well, and Mrs. Walsley, and you are out of line. You are not. You are not an asset to the town. So I want to call to the town's attention. I think you're slanderous, and you should. Whether Keep this is done to in the what budget. this agenda is about. I whether think that's totally uncalled for, and I think she should be able to speak and say whatever she wants. She shouldn't whether. be mentioning people's names and on things like I that. That's not part of this budget. A position. You it are out of line in no, my I opinion. No, I am not out of line, and I think that it is time <clears throat> that we took a realistic approach to these two critical positions, critical positions that are serving the town and and controlling a huge a huge amount of town revenues so I will say in public uh, what I have uh, said a little earlier in this year I have a big problem with the wages for the tax collector and the town clerk that are showing in these two budgets and I as one taxpayer would be very happy to see uh, either uh, an adjustment coming forward or uh, special money articles, which is the way the elected officials always used to be compensated. So I am proud of both of you. I'm grateful for the work you do, and you have on your shoulders the whole weight of your positions 365 days a year in this town. Thank you for what you do. I'm not saying I disagree with her, but the way she said it is wrong. Regina. Shirley, thank you for your budget. Thank I you. agree as far as your duties to the town and the tax collector as well. Your total you. budget, now you're going to be responsible for four elections this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. is under $285,000. Your projected revenues are $3.7 million. Out of that, you've already brought in almost $3 million. That's just on pretty much motor vehicle and, uh, permits, never mind what you have to deal with with the window. I haven't been in that position before, but I've been in similar ones, mm -hmm. and I can understand that it must be very difficult. And I appreciate what you and Donna do and your departments do, and you are responsible for all the money. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, and uh, it's very important, and that is one of the reasons why I did not agree to blanket salaries this year mm -hmm. you two were one of the re were two of the main reasons because what happens is people that have already been added on to continue to get added on to and no one else gets the chance to catch up and i agree with mary louise now i do see in your salary that there's a two percent increase is that um i don't it's i think it's 2.7 2.7 mm -hmm. okay so i mean i would feel comfortable with Whatever, like she said, whatever you guys think yep. that you deserve to have, I would support you. Thank so you. So if there's any change that you think you need to make, okay. you just let Mr. us know. Mr. Waddell? All right. Thank yeah, you. I agree that, that you do a great job and that you deserve the 2.71. That you deserve a, a, a raise. I think it's sad that people have to bring up other people when they're talking about a specific budget. And Positions. I think people should... Excuse no, me. You used a name, excuse, Mrs. Wolseley. You're minute, out of line. Wait a minute. I did not interrupt Yes, any. you're out of line again. We're used to it. I did not interrupt anybody. I sat here and waited my turn, and I would appreciate yeah, well, we're used the same to it, thing. So you can continue. All right, the, uh, you deserve that, and I, I just wanted to say that we we should stick to the budget that we're talking about okay. and the individual that we're talking about, and not try to promote our own vindictive uh, things. Theories. Here. Thank you. Yeah, and I have a long history with Shirley. I know how valuable she is, and I will uh, consider uh, and agree with almost anything that she would suggest. Thank you, Shirley. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't say I'm only able to do what I'm able to do because I have a fantastic staff. Right. And they're, they're so supportive and, and so helpful so that we can provide the residents the service that we can. So I'm thank very you. grateful. We appreciate it. All right. So we're, I thank you for your comments, for everybody, and we'll just leave it at that for right now. <laughs> thank you, we're Shirley. We're proud of you, Shirley. Well, thank you. Moving on to uh, the 
tax collector. Good evening. Good evening. I feel very small. <laughs> um, thank you. I appreciate those comments okay. very much. Um, I will say that um, my deputy has been with me nine years. Her salary started at seventeen twenty an hour. Mm -hmm. So nine years later, she's currently making $19.63. And she's still with me. Um, if anybody needs a raise, I think it would be her. So moving on, um, my budget has, it's very small, yep. has six line items. There is an <coughs> increase this year, and the increase um, has solely to do with wages. There is a, I did put in a 3% 3 um, 3 increase for the tax collector. That's um, a total of $1,730 increase um, to bring that up to $59,391. The um, part-time wages, I actually brought that down a little bit. That is for um, an additional help that we would need at yeah. tax time. We haven't really used it in the last few years, but in case one of us gets six, it's it's nice to have somebody, you know, something in there in case we have to use it. Um, Vivian's hours or the deputy hours um, include an additional 120 hours in there because the tax office is open 40 hours. Um, if I go on vacation, she has to stay the extra time. So there's a little bit of an extra in in her wage um, line there. The tax liens and instrument has stayed the same. Staff development has stayed the same. Supplies and expenses have stayed the same. So um, I'll entertain any questions that you might have. Mr. Waddell. That's it. Very good. Thank you. And. Mrs. Wolseley? I should have uh, asked uh, Shirley as well. <coughs> Dollar value in your department, how much money do you actually, uh, actually goes through your hands and through your department in a given well, year? Uh, we're responsible to collect a warrant of, mm -hmm. um, I think it's just under $58 million a year. A lot of money. Yes. Mrs. Uh, Regina? Um, yeah, so f just under $58 million and you have a $108,000 budget. Yes. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate what you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. And again, thank you. You've done a great job. How many years have you been here now? Um, ten. Ten. Yeah. Going fast. It seems yeah. like just yesterday. But yeah, thank you for all you do. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. All set. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Have a good evening. Moving on to the planning board. Hi again, Jason. Good evening once again. <laughs> so I'm here with the uh, planning board's budget this evening. Um, the uh, bottom line number is 152,493. That is a 1.05% increase. Um, the only increases within the budget are under the staff development lines and the supply and expenses lines. Under staff development, I show an increase from 1240 to 1500. That is actually the third year that we've proposed that because of the default budget the two prior years. The reason for that is the certified <coughs> plug plane manager credential that I earned in 2017 in addition to the AICP that I maintained the planning uh, certification. And also that, we, you know, I'd like to have Lori give us some training opportunities as well yeah. that, that I think would be beneficial. And that line will, will go over budget this year just by a little bit. So that 1500 will be helpful to us. Under supplies and expenses, we're showing an increase from 3598 to 4200 um, That increase, a lot of that has to do with unanticipated costs with the HP uh, printer that we share with the building department mm -hmm. in conservation. The uh, ink cartridges and, and such have been a little more costly than, than we've anticipated, so uh, we have to account for that. That's a lot of why we were a little bit over budget in 2018, and we want to account for that this year. Other than that, everything's exactly the same and I would entertain any questions that anybody has. Mr. Waddell. I'm set. Thank you, Jason. Mary Louise. Jason, we're proud of you, and thank you very much. Good job. You're welcome. I agree, and I hope you get a master plan. 
Thank you. Yes, <laughs> he will. He will. Be good. Be good. He's good I for. I totally it. agree. There's um, one thing I would like yes. to bring up while you Certainly. are here. Uh, it's just not about the budget, but it's something that um, is pertinent for right now. And it's about the rail rail trail. Yes. Ah. Uh, what is going on there, Fred? We're currently having town council examine the last correspondence from the state uh, to determine whether or not we can bring this to the board for final resolution. Mm -hmm. So, because I understand that there's no way that these figures can be changed when you're dealing with state contracts. Well, <clears throat> the state has pointed out that under Article. Statute 9-9, okay. The town has exactly the same statute in Articles 31, 33, and 35. So we're, we're sort of in a bind between us, and we need to work out an acceptable solution. And we're not the only town wrestling with this. What other towns are? All the towns except for the town of Greenland. So only Greenland has signed on to this? They're, they're the only ones that have agreed so far with the state. Mm -hmm. I think we'll all come there, but I think we'll, we'll come there on some basis that we all understand what's going on. And is there a timeline involved? Uh, no, there's no timeline set yet. I mean, mm -hmm. we're trying to get this resolved. Council has just finished <clears throat> a major uh, effort dealing with um, several cases he's working on, and I've, I've directed him to please get right to this so we can get it straightened out and get mm -hmm. it taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to say, I know that Jason has been a big, he's heard plenty <coughs> of uh, input from. Uh, I, yes, I do. I regularly attend the meetings of that, of that uh, group. And uh, I think it's a very worthwhile project. I'd love to see it, you know, move forward. And I'm hoping that, that you know, we can get that um, any, with the agreement worked out so that and we can. And you hear a lot of support. And I do hear a lot mm -hmm. of support in the community, yes. Yeah. Um, Gina? Yes, I hear some support. I'm also, I think the project is a great project as long as the town of Hampton doesn't have to pay for it like it has for things in the past. So I'm sure that uh, the agreement will get settled so that we will remain exempt from all those things the way that town manager Welch had it signed up before, which is what the, is the agreement that I agree to. So if there's going to be any amendments to that, it could possibly make me change my mind about the project. So you're saying that you don't support it if the... Uh, it goes forth with the way the, sound, the state is suggesting? Well, I think I would like to wait for Mark to be done with his review. Okay, and Mr. Waddell? Fred, are you sure that I was told that, that Northampton, Portsmouth, Hampton Falls had all signed? Every town had signed. but I, I, None of them were accepted except for Greenland. Hmm. What does that mean? All the towns met together. And we, 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 we decided upon a resolution because we were concerned that <clears throat> when it comes right down to the bottom line here, that we were required to insure the state and all of its operations, and they are required to not insure anything yeah. in addition to all of our operations. And we said there needs to be some sort of an adjustment. Um, the state has been very forceful about that. They do not wish to have an adjustment. Uh, I... Frankly, I, I don't see why we should pay their workers' compensation expenses and other expenses, but that's what it boils down to. Yeah. Uh, we think that th they should go back and reevaluate that and look at mm -hmm. it from a sensible standpoint of if you assign one of your employees to do something, you're responsible for him. If we assign an employee to do something, we're responsible for him. But we're not responsible for all of your employees plus all of our employees. Um, right. That's kind of where we're at. Uh, from an insurance standpoint, and I think we can come to a middle ground. I think there's a middle ground to come to. Yeah. And what about, um, when will Mark have his input? He is working on it now, I expect probably within the week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley? I've been hoping to see that issue on our agenda once we get finished with doing our budget uh, options here we need to go back to regular agendas and i think we need a lot of time <clears throat> to talk about that rail trail nonsense especially the money involved so um when will we be finished or when will we have time on our agenda to put that on public works is on next week that completes the agendas the, mm -hmm. as far as your review of warrant uh, the review of budgets are concerned you then have to decide how you're going to vote on the budgets you can do that either this week or next. 
uh, once that's done, we're done with them, and we certify them to the plan to the uh, budget committee, and the budget committee starts their their process yeah, okay. of overlooking the budget. I know they want to start someplace around the first or second week in November, so we're getting quite tight on that time frame. Council's been t directed or requested to do this as soon as possible, so that you can have it on. I'm hoping to get it on your next agenda. Okay, well, let's put it on the following week so he doesn't have to hurry, uh, which would be what? What the next, not next appointment, be but the, the first, next one. First Monday in, uh, in uh, November. Okay, uh, so we'll <coughs> have Christina pre please put that on sure. there so that we yeah. can yeah. make sure people have time that might want to yeah. come to the meeting. Yeah. Regina? Yeah, but like I said, I think we might need time to discuss this, and then we have a set of our own warrant articles dealing with infrastructure on our own property that we have to uh, prepare for, so. Mm -hmm. Or we're gonna have it put, like I just said, on the agenda for the yeah. following week after that. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, next we have the library and Amanda, Amanda back there. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Okay. Oh, yes. How are you this evening? I'm doing well, how are you? Fine, thanks. Good evening, Amanda. Hello. So unlike some of the other budgets, we reflect both wages and um, health benefits in the library's budget. I was instructed to prepare, to prepare it without a health insurance estimate this year, since it's always so variable, we never really know what the projection should be. And so we yeah. do have that hard number now, so I need to ask for an increase <coughs> in the budget to reflect the health insurance change. Okay. I need to request $5,427 be added to the bottom of the library budget for health insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. 5427 5427 So do you want to talk about your bottom line budget? Yeah, I can, I can tell you where the changes fall. Um, yeah. I've brought you pretty level budgets the last few years, and so I tried to build something that was conservative but did yeah. add some money this year. Um, yeah. There are increases to um, wages, both in full-time and part-time. If you look at the bottom line for part-time, it looks like a reduction that's just senior staff retiring, newer staff coming in at a lower wage. So I haven't cut anyone or anything like that. Oh, okay. um, there's a very large jump in what, what's called the sick leave pool, which is really m the money we use to pay for all substitutes. It could be for, for vacation, it could be for sick leave, it could be uh, for staff training above their normal operating <laughs> hours. We have not had enough in that line for many years, so that's mm -hmm. what that jump is about. And then there is a little bit of money in the merit pool for 2020 um, wage changes. Um, all of the health insurance things are self-explanatory and are not part of my control. And then within what I call the operating budget, the money that gets given directly to the Board of Trustees that pays for all of our yep. operating expenses, we have um, some, I mean, they're pretty minor changes, things that we can't control. Um, we carry an insurance policy that's going up slightly. The contract for our HVAC <coughs> maintenance is going up. Uh, we also have a, a custodian who's on a contractual cleaning mm -hmm. arrangement, so that's going up. Mm -hmm. um, the software we use to run the library, basically, that's going up. And we also um, participate in the state um, downloadable program. We have never successfully put that money into a budget. It's always ended up being a default year or something like that. So we find ways to pay for it, obviously, but it, that commitment on our behalf to be a member of that consortium and to pay for the license for that yeah. is in the budget this year. And then uh, we participate with Unitil in a natural, the natural gas uh, a budget program, and they've given us a higher number for the next six months to 12 months. So we are asking for, mon for more money for that. Yeah. So that's, what the, that's the sum total of what's going into the library budget for next year, yeah. of, an, of an increase. Mr. Waddell? Nothing. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Wolsey? I love the library. I spend a lot of time there. I got a little scared when I read about bed bugs. Yeah. What, are we, what are we doing? Are you getting help with that? Are you going to be able to, uh, I don't know, uh, pipe some, some substance in that will kill any little critters that shouldn't be there? So fumigating, I my yeah. When I <laughs> we check every book that comes back to the library twice, as a matter of fact, and that's a matter of course. It's not just because of this particular yeah. problem. We yeah. check them for their condition, whether or not someone spilled coffee on them, whether or not they have any sort of a bug issue, yeah. anything like that. So we're always looking. We always have been. We're fairly confident that our building is remaining bug free, and it's just catching those couple of books was very alarming. We've had a review by. Um, 
Ned Kittrich, local um, gentleman who runs a pest specialist program uh, company, um, he he discussed the steps we took, and he also did a you know a cursory review of the space. Yeah. He doesn't think that we have any problems where the books were returned. Yeah. So, just continuing to be vigilant. Uh, well, yes. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm watching. What I, I was a little horrified when I saw that. Um, you have an outstanding staff, and Thank you've you. done a marvelous job uh, bringing the library modern. Really, getting getting new programs and things. So I very much uh, appreciate going in. We might you might make an announcement that donations, maybe uh, books or uh, CDs or whatever. I've been going through my things and dropping oh, off some yes. extra, you know, CDs or things like that. You can always use maybe some yes. donations. We take donations year round. The Friends of the Library host two sales for us. We ask that you not bring us things in poor condition, mm -hmm. dictionaries, encyclopedias, or textbooks, but otherwise we'll take anything, hardback, paperback, right. music CDs, DVDs. Yeah. Um, their two sales basically fund the summer reading program we offer every year, so that's a six-week program right. of events and prizes and things like that. Right. So every donation is money towards the summer reading program, so please bring them in at any time. Definitely. Right. And thank you for having the, um, the box there, and I hope you have it. Again, fairly soon for the SPCA. Mm. That's my very, very favorite charity, and I was delighted to see that you had that. Uh. Sure. Coming up in November will be uh, the New Hampshire Food Pantry, and then in December we'll do the Toys for Tots box. So. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Regina. No. The budget looks great, and thank you for all the work you do at the yeah. library and the yeah. huge part of the community that you are. Thank you. She's made it modern. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very special place, and you lead the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in tonight. Absolutely. Next, we have the Conservation Commission. <laughs> Good evening, Jay. Good evening, ladies Gee, you're nice tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> All right. Why not? <laughs> you saved the best for almost last, I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, our budget is fairly straightforward and, and pretty similar to last year's budget and previous year's budgets. Um, as do many of the departments in town, we try to keep our expenses minimal and keep them as level as we possibly can. Yeah. Uh, the increases are for our part-time wages for our conservation coordinator, and that, I think, as you recall from... Uh, the last couple of years is based on the study that the assistant town manager has done on wages for various uh, personnel in town and is in an effort to try to bring <coughs> that position back up to where it should be. Mm -hmm. um, everything else is pretty much straightforward and as it has been. And how much is that addition? Um, it is going from um, the 2019 budget was 33251 uh, it's proposed to go up to 34502. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? No, great job. And thank you for what you do. You've been very passionate about conservation, and I appreciate that. Regina? I agree. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you all. And I uh, <coughs> turned up the meeting at 3 today. Oh. Nancy Stiles did too. I'm sorry about that. You missed a great meeting. Yeah. We'll do it again, though. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, bye now. Bye-bye. Uh, moving on to the cemetery, Mr. Welch. The place of last repose, Mr. Jim, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we sort of cut the, uh, the uh, appropriation down. The request was for 233000 Nine hundred forty-nine dollars, and I've cut that back to one hundred and forty-one nine hundred and fifteen, which is only about four thousand dollars over the default budget. Uh, we tried to cut back some of those services and go a little slower in things that we need to do. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do is get the grass to grow again, mm. uh, because in some of the areas in the cemetery, it's yeah. not growing; it's dying. Yeah. Uh, we're also treating for the grubs, which are killing it and uh, trying to take care of that. As you know, we've taken a, quite a number of old pine trees down. So the ants are all looking for places to live at this point because some of them are really infested and really bad. Uh, but that's, that predicament is mostly gone. We just will eventually have to wait for the, <coughs> excuse me, wait for the stumps to, uh, to rot out and we'll just remove the top of the stumps and yeah. regrass that area, put some mm -hmm. loam over it and grass it. Uh, we're gonna plan on doing a little bit of homework on trying to fix some of the streets 
as you can probably see from driving through there, the uh, large pine trees that we're taking down were heaving the streets with their roots. Right. So we're going to try to cut those at the perimeter of the streets and, and uh, then put a patch over that area so it will be smooth again. Mm -hmm. You can actually go through. Uh, we have built a brand new uh, section of the cemetery, a brand new section for burials, and that seems to be going very well. Uh, they are selling graves at, uh, at a, a respectable rate, and money is going into the uh, into the endowment fund for the maintenance of the cemetery in the future. So, trying to cut this back to realist, realistic uh, things that are going on, we're just going to move backwards a little bit, continue to replace equipment, continue to have our few employees that we have, which are all part time. There are no part, no full time positions there. Uh, we do do a little bit of overtime from time to time, but that's usually because we have burials on weekends and we have to have somebody come in for that. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> contracted services uh, is something that we, uh, we continue to do. We, we knocked that down by 2.96%, uh, trying to keep that in line with what we actually need uh, as opposed to bringing in a bunch of contracted services which will some, appear sometime in the future. Uh, we have a number of gravestones that are going to have to be reset because they're actually being pulled right. out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there are none currently toppled. Uh, we had to dig several gravestones up to reset them. Mm -hmm. um, some of them had completely disappeared, the small, like, um, military stones yeah. in the, in the uh, so-called uh, town portion of the cemetery. They had disappeared several feet under the ground, and we had to dig those yeah. out, for resetting those and making them look <clears throat> decent again. So <clears throat> we think this is a, a program that will continue to run. It, uh, it's not much of an increase. It's an $11,000 increase over what it was uh, this year, and uh, it's a little bit more than that in the previous years. But uh, we're improving the cemetery as we go along, buying equipment, treating the ground, and trying to make it look much more presentable. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? Yes, I, and I forwarded to Fred. I got a complaint about a tree that had been planted uh, by a grave and then the tree died or something. But bottom <coughs> line, I'm wondering, do they, I don't go into the cemetery that often. Um, are the trustees considering putting up a few sign boards or something? Say, for example, I've had people talk about they put these little uh, statues or stuff, oh, yes. yeah. and uh, I, that's got to be a pain in the neck for the poor men who are cleaning in the cemetery and cutting the grass and all that. Is there a way for them to put up a few signboards and said and say, please do not, you know, put statues or. Uh, Please do not try to plant plants or trees. If, if you drive in, you'll see there's a brand new signboard as you go down the entrance road. Okay, then I will. Describing a lot of those things. Yeah, that will help. Because it seems, you know, I feel badly for the people who have lost loved ones and oh, are yes. going in there. But you can't have somebody just planting trees at random. And well, it causes, a, it causes a problem. We had a recent issue where the, uh, a person who called in and complained yes. that two of the trees that they had planted had been taken out. And they were correct because they were planted on somebody else's gravesite and had to do a burial there, which was unfortunate. And the third tree they have is dying. Uh, so it doesn't leave much room. The soil there is not very good. Yeah. It's not good for planting. Yeah. Uh, we're lucky we can get grass to grow in some areas, never mind yes. trees. Pine trees will grow anywhere. We had uh, to complain about a poet tree that was poisoned and all that stuff. So. And we're actually, that, that particular complaint, we're actually, uh, we is the avarist is coming in to look at another tree in town, yeah. which we're very concerned about. He's going to actually take a look at that, take a sample, yeah. and determine what happened to the tree. Oh, yeah. But people should not be just going in and... Actually, the regulations have always said you're forbidden from planting trees in the cemetery. Yeah, but unless you wave the information in oh, yes. front of them on the board... <clears throat> I agree. Because I thank you for your help on that complaint as well. Regina? I have nothing on the cemeteries. Thanks for all the work you've done with it. I'll try. Yeah, Fred, the whole mess that there was has been cleaned up. Mm. I won't say yes because mm -hmm. we don't know for sure, uh, but I would say that 99% of it is cleaned up. Okay. Something in that area, we're right. trying very hard to keep it running consistently. Um, 
we're hoping that with the trees that were taken down at this point in time, there were passageways between yeah. each of the rows. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, they've been used for internments. And so where the tree trunks are now, we're, obviously, we're not going to inter anybody there. Right. So hoping to use those as past new, new passageways where it's right. push allowed. Right. But I, mean, I was talking about some of the administrative problems that we had going on down there. The administrative problems, by and large, are resolved. Okay. All right. And we're staying on top of it to make sure it stays that way. Yeah. And as you go by, you can see that they're cleaning it up. They're doing a much better job of maintaining it mm -hmm. and everything. It is. Yeah. And, so, and yeah, the, it's very good. Problems, hopefully, from a maintenance standpoint, are disappearing as well. Yeah. Uh, one, one more quick one for Fred. The cremated remains, have they now a section or of the cemetery? Because that would be separate, I think, or should be. Uh, most people own grave plots, and some of them actually have internments of full-size caskets. Yeah. And then they have internments in the same lot with, uh, with the cremation remains. So uh, there's no one specific area where the, because that was a little bit of an issue, I think, a couple of years ago. It was, and we actually looked at it, and it, it would cost uh, a lot of money to build the facility that we're right. talking about. I forget what they call that. They have a name for that facility. Yeah, they I do, and I forget what it is, too. I've, I don't um, remember. My mind's been on drainage the last we few days. We don't have that um, now. Okay. We don't, we don't have a, a, spa a space for cremations, but it would take a considerable amount of money to build it. Okay. And to put it in, put it in operation, but that's something that may have to happen. But we're not in the just having them thrown somewhere. They're actually being interred within the graves that they own. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Well, the thing is, it's been years since people have been allowed to plant plants in cemeteries. Most cemeteries don't even allow people to bring plants there anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's so very true. People are unreasonable to do such <clears throat> things. It's it, it causes do. a whole series of problems. Uh, not just for the cemetery property itself, but with the actual graves themselves. Yeah. We actually have some headstones that are imbe embedded right in the trees because they've taken over some, yeah. some sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next we have parks and recreation. How was the party? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, good. Um, we had a great turnout and m a lot of it, if no, I'd say most of it was also um, run by the PTA. They helped us with that event, so they put in a ton of work. They got a bunch of volunteers. Um, so my hat's off to them. They right. did a lot of that night. Um, I ran around in the bus, as you saw, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> my assistant, Brandon, was all over the place down at Tuckfield. So it was a super event. We saw um, a lot of new faces, a lot of old faces, and uh, just about everything in between. And it went off without a hitch, I believe. So uh, everyone had positive things to say. How did the uh, food trucks work? The food trucks went really well. Um, they were concerned that with the anticipated number that they were going to be over, over busy. At, no, they were going to be too busy, but they ended up being consistently uh, busy throughout the night for the three hours. Um, being the first time we've done it, it was kind of a little bit of an experiment. We didn't know what to expect. Um, the turnout could have been less, but they were happy when they left that. And what type of things did the food truck sell? We had Clyde's Cupcakes, who was desserts, <laughs> and then we had um, a barbecue truck that did basic fries, um, I believe burgers, and macaroni and cheese, kid-friendly type mm. fare. Oh, great. But that went off. That was very um, successful, and people enjoyed that a lot. It was a new addition, obviously the first time we've tried it. Well, thank you. Thanks and for how long were you at the park? For that event, I was there from 3 to 10.30, and then I was at the park at 6.30 in the morning doing another <laughs> project. So I didn't go home till 10.30 that night. But good. Had a, a good day. Hours. A lot of hours. Okay. Well, we're anxious to hear your... Uh, Yes. Presentation this evening. So as far as the budget goes, um, we're coming in at just over, I should say, just under $262,000. Most of the changes um, that are in there are coming out of the grounds and fields items, um, and we're going to be putting some of those into the Warren article that ah. we get from the 20%. Yeah. Um, the only thing I get concerned about is if for some reason 
that Warren article doesn't pass some year or something like that, that's taking out a good chunk of money I yeah. won't be able to cover um, within my budget, probably, if that doesn't pass. Yeah, and that helps with the tax rate. Right. It yeah. definitely, it's, I think it's just around $17,000 that we're going to put into that Warren article. But if I had to... Yeah. Try to make that up. I'd yeah. I'd be struggling. Yeah, because so. there's talk of the that that's one of the solutions with the trash committee, uh, that they would like part of it. But that, it, you found it to be an integral part of your it's service. Huge. Um, we Trash. would not be able to do a we wouldn't be able to do a lot without that. Um, it's a huge benefit for the department, mm -hmm. and most of it, like this particular thing, all of these are maintenance items. That yeah. we wouldn't so, be able to do otherwise. Yeah, it almost seems like a natural <coughs> to, uh, from some of the money that's made from people coming to the beach, which we have to pay for. Mm -hmm. It reverts back to the people that actually live in Hampton and helps uh, lower the tax rate and get, uh, have opportunities for children and adults. Right, agreed. Thank you. And did you want to do your presentation or? Anything else? It's pretty much uh, pretty much that's yeah. the biggest change I, I believe. Um, there's a couple of dollars with the salaries I think that may have changed, but otherwise it's pretty. Mm -hmm. And do you want to mention your flat. bottom line there? My bottom line is two sixty one nine seven five. Okay, and Mrs. Wolsey? I don't have a problem with the budget, but I have one suggestion. Yes. You don't ever see old faces; you see familiar faces. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll make that adjustment. <laughs> Some are too familiar. Um, Regina? Yes, um, thank you for your budget. I have no problems with it, but I'm glad that the Halloween Fest was a success and you have another big event coming up this weekend. We do have a <laughs> playground build on Friday and Saturday down at Kids Kingdom. So, oh, good. rain That's or shine, good. it's going up. That's good. So, yes, very big. <clears throat> Yes, and I'll be bringing the coffee at 7.30. Thank you so much. I'll need it. <laughs> so, and I also wanted to talk about, I attended the, actually, Selectman Waddell was there, too. <coughs> Thursday night at the Academy, you had the... Community Forum. Yeah, um, not a great turnout, but I think the message is getting out there, which is very good. It is, and the people that showed up were very dedicated and um, passionate about what they want to see in town which is what we need Good. and that turned out although it wasn't the biggest or greatest it will offset with our survey we're doing that we've had just under 300 responses to so i think wow. yeah and i know a bunch of those surveys got handed out this morning too yes so. they did <laughs> so you'll be getting some more so thanks for the good job thank, thank you. you and mr waddell right how many do people have on your staff we have Myself and my program coordinator, and then we have a part-time position at the front desk that's 28 hours in a 10-hour position, and then we have two part-time parks guys that yeah. are uh, 28 hours a week. Yeah. And what, what are you responsible for? Um, pretty much Tuck Field, all the parks in, in town. Um, we do have a contracted service that mows most of those, but we're in charge of the maintenance mm -hmm. of those parks. Uh, Tuck Field, we do stuff with uh, the Historical Society, we do, we line all the fields, we mow all the fields for sports. Um, mm -hmm. We work with the schools for facilities to do some of our programs, yeah. and we also uh, let people use Tuck Field for some of our programs um, based on need and request and stuff like that. Yeah. So we're running programs. I think we ran 41 senior programs so far to date, which, you know, it's just under about yeah. one a week. and. We're keeping busy. Um, we are finding that we're, I don't want to say programming too much, but we're, we're doing a lot and spreading ourselves a little thin sometimes. Mm. Right, but you're doing a lot and those fields get used constantly in the good weather. Saturday when I was down there, uh, you really couldn't see the fields because there were so many people. They're, the soccer program from the HYA, I think she said they had just under like 400 kids using that field every weekend along with our flag football Starting program. Starting from kindergarten, right? Pre-K. Pre-K. Wow. Pre-K through, I want to say, eighth grade. And then we have our flag football, which is third grade through high school. Mm. And that's... Which is a very successful That runs program. on Saturdays program. and Sundays. So. Yeah. Yeah, so you're doing a lot. We are. With the, with the 200 and... I mean, 
people in town are getting their money's worth out of the 261,000. I definitely think so. Yeah. And I'm hoping with the results from that survey that going forward, um, we're going to probably present what our results are to the board. Um, and going forward, I, I know we try to keep the budgets flat, but I'm going to hopefully be able to present some changes and try to add some stuff to make us even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that survey was really nice. That meeting was really fun. And that and they can immediately take your input and put it up on the screen is really good. Instant results sometimes yeah. is scary for the person in the front row that was watching everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It turned out okay in the end. But it was good. Thank now, you. With your um, different uh, trips that you run, because I know that a lot of them go to casinos and that. Have you included that new casino in Boston? We haven't. We've, we haven't got the response that we thought we would with that. Um, we tried to do Oxford. Oxford's kind of mellowing out, and we, we're not getting enough to run casino trips anymore in general. Well, one of the things that if you, uh, you could stress, particularly if the weather is nice, Although I, I think they're going to try to make their outdoor facilities good even in the um, winter time, but I'm not really positive about that. But it's a beautiful place for people to walk around, and it's all wheelchair accessible for the most part. Um, and I just wanted to say that if you did do something there, you need to make sure that you go early in the morning because the amounts with the bets and stuff like that are much lower. And they go up <coughs> as the day goes on. Yeah, as the yes. day goes on, so it's like an early bird special type thing. Gotcha. Mrs. Wilson. Yeah, really quickly, I think you and I talked about this before, the signboard for the donors on Kids' Kingdom. That will be going up. Um, if we can get it up, it'll be up this weekend. Excellent. So and thank Gina. you. Yeah, you, I just, you were listing all the things you do, and then I just found out today that you also attend the monthly senior meeting we that do. they have over at the Methodist yeah. Church. And that's where we announce all of our programs, all the trips, and everything we got going on. Good. And so. usually I use them as a sounding board to also tell mm -hmm. us what they want to see us run. Good. So, mm -hmm. And that's been going on for a long time, using yeah. that. Venue. Long before I've, yeah. I was okay. here. That's always Thank a nice you. thing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, next, we have mosquito control. Well, I would have never guessed, but I was going to read it. Mosquito oh, control. All right, that's pretty. <laughs> well, with all this stuff, though, with those those uh, mosquitoes and everybody's Tripoli. freaking out in Massachusetts and stuff, the equine encephalitis or whatever. Portsmouth too. We have any uh, problems there or any solutions there? Fred? Actually, no. The best solution we have is to do everything the doctors advise you to do, which is to stay covered up, treat yourself with the uh, uh, DEET, and, and make sure that you renew it on a regular basis while you're outdoors. Yeah. Um, keep the bugs off of you. Mosquitoes yeah. can be dangerous. Uh, the money that we have in this account is a contractual basis. Okay. And I believe it's a three-year long-term contract, so okay. it's going to stay flat for a while. Um, but it, it meets all of our requirements for spraying. Yeah. Uh, it meets all of our requirements for putting out our testing materials, for putting out our gr lovely green head fly traps. Ah. Uh, so the green heads will have a place to land and, and die, yeah. uh, as well as our mosquito catching equipment. So, have anything um, to do with bed bugs? No, no, <laughs> they, they, they don't tend to uh, land anywhere in, a, in the marsh or in someone's yard. So. Um. Um, but this program is very successful, as you know. We Good. have not had any major incidents in town. And it's Dragon Mosquito? It's Dragon Mosquito. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that woman that is either the owner or the manager, she has been all over TV, and she's very uh, yeah. interesting to listen to. She's, uh, she's very informative. And she pretty much is saying that uh, it really takes to the second hard frost before they're mm -hmm. it does. absolutely dead. Yeah. yeah. So. I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the executive uh, branch uh, board of selectmen, town manager, budget committee, trustees of the trust funds. Fred? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the selectmen uh, have a budget of $16,300. That, that includes the $15,000 that we pay for our five board members. Uh, during the course of the year, there's $1,300 worth of expenses. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't normally spend the entire $1,300, but uh, the 
the five year average is $1,129, so we're pretty close. Um, that goes for special things like uh, flowers for members of the city government or town government who pass away, uh, state representatives or et cetera, who we lose, uh, and special occasions. The board may go to a meeting. Is it expense for that meeting? We pay for that out of that fund. Uh, the second part of the executive is the town manager's so-called budget, which includes the town manager, the deputy town manager, and the administrative assistant. Uh, that budget may change depending on what the board does for the manager and deputy manager's salaries. It hasn't been done yet this year. Not not asking you to do anything. I'm just saying it may change if you do that. Um, the budget committee is, is a separate entity. They have their own budget. They usually set that budget at their first yeah. meeting when they do the, the general budget of the town. So this is what they had in there this past year. So we just left it in. And the same with trustees of trust funds. Uh, basically, they keep it pretty flat at $1,000 a year. That sort of summarizes everything that's here, Mr. Chairman. Any questions by anybody? I have a question. Yeah, Regina. We were talking about how we do the contract negotiations now and Christina's part in that. How, how, uh, how much do you think that adds to her uh, workload to do that? It's something that is just generally part of her workload and it's been going on now for several years. Uh, and I'm not hearing any complaints about it. It's, it's not easy work. Yeah. I have to tell you, it's just not easy work. Yeah. Finance director is involved in that as well right. uh, because we have to have the financial people. We have to have somebody who's skilled at putting together the, uh, the material, you know, with a computer, et cetera, et cetera. She also does the town report, and she types the entire town report. Wow. That's all camera ready. It's oh. all done here. That's why we get such a good price in the town report. Wow. So there's a lot of work entailed in her job. Uh, and she does, no, I can't even get, I, we'd, be, we'd be here for over an hour just right. describing the various things she does. And they increased her hours from 35 to 40. Right. When, so a few then, years ago. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. When she took on all that stuff, her hours were increased because we had several part time or several full time positions that were only 35 hours in this right. building. Yep. And when they put those extra tasks, they gave a bump in pay, but they also increased her from 35 hours a week to 40. Yeah. To That's help. correct. You know, it helps pay yeah. wise, and it also gave her a little extra time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she needed the time to get oh, the work done. There's yes. no question. She's very busy, like Fred said, but yeah. they did increase her Every hours Every time I also. walk in that office, yes, I see it. I definitely don't have to uh, yeah. convince me, but. No, no, she's working all the time. There's no yes, question about yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Thank very you. good, Mr. Waddell. No. Set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ooh. next, she's all getting ready there. Oh, I'm she's ready. ready. I just came back she's up ready. to the table because I figured <laughs> we're the only two left. So oh, okay. here I Great. am. Um, first, I will answer Jim's questions from earlier, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, debt at the $2,650,242 is 9.4% of the total budget. That's in front of you right now, the town manager budget. Um, and according to the MDNA that will be in the audit, our actual debt percent percent of debt allowable right now with the 18 audit was um 19 percent okay so we're well within the debt limits i think that was the those were the questions that you okay had. yeah because a lot of times <clears throat> people see you know what you're paying and think wow we're we're over indebted you know correct yeah correct we are not over indebted though. yeah that's good so um finance budget i think yeah. it's next so the finance budget is $392,613, 2.22%. There's nothing really new in here. The majority of it is among your, amongst the wage lines. And then there's a little increase in the bank service charges, just to put it more in line with the five-year averages there. So I kind of tried to balance it out. Um, the majority of the positions in the finance office are part of a collective bargaining agreement. Actually, all three of them are, with the exception of mine. And so their raises were, have already been voted on by the voters and are part of their collective bargaining. <coughs> and then um, the non-union would be my increase of whatever the non-union is given yeah. off of the merit line. So that kind of, and then the audit is in there also under finance and it's actually down we went out to bid, I think, on that last year, Fred? Was it last yes. year? Yes. Yeah. And so um, 
the price in for next year is 29000 according to the contract mm -hmm. that we signed with the auditors. And that's assuming we'll need a single audit, which I expect we will need single audits for the next several years because that's in <coughs> regards to if you have any aid totaling over $750,000, mm -hmm. then you have to have a single audit. So with all of our SRF yeah. projects that we have coming on the books, I'm guessing okay. we had a single audit for 18. Yeah. And I'm guessing we'll continue to have that additional audit piece for the next couple of years. But Red. still, the 29000 should yeah. cover that. Yeah. Mr. Waddell? Nope. It's good. No problem. No. And Regina? No problems. And the audit is still in process? Nope. Um, sorry, that was on my update sheet before we got so involved in the tax rate. The audit is done. Um, I received, I left a little early today, um, but right before I left, I received the PDF copy of it. I had a few changes that had to be made, mostly date-wise, but I want to make sure that those are all correct and that my MDNA, because I hadn't seen that yet, but that it had been inserted into the audit properly. Mm -hmm. As soon as that's done, I will send each of you Good. an email with the audit, and then um, the bound copies will be here sometime this week, so I'll put your bound copy into your Excellent. boxes in Good. Christina's office as soon as they're here, but they should be here this week along with the governance right. letter that you and I were talking about earlier, Regina. And the MDNA is management discussion and analysis. Discussion and analysis, yep. Yeah. And that, um, like I said, I've written it and we've gone back and forth, but I haven't seen the finished copy, so I wanted to review that before I released it to you because if there's yeah. any typos or anything or yeah. something didn't get inserted correctly, I want to make sure that they fix that before oh, yeah. the audit is oh, yeah. given Perfect. out to the public. Yeah, very good. So, and then if, um, once you guys see the audit, if you wish to have someone from the auditors come in again, they're happy to do that. That's part of yeah. the cost. So we can discuss that at a later date. <clears throat> Thank you very much for mm -hmm. all that you do. Thank we you. We appreciate it. All right. And that's a substantial amount of work too. Oh, yeah. the audit oh, yeah. is fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, general government buildings. Isn't she doing MIS? Yeah. Did you do oh, MIS? I'm sorry. I did not. I was going to wait. Okay, so MIS. Um, let's see. The total on MIS is $227,793. It's up 2%. You can see that there's fluctuations, both positive and negative there. I've been attempting <coughs> each year to get things on the proper lines as to where they are being spent. So it's only up 2%. Mm -hmm. um, which is a small number. We're going to eventually, we're grateful to the voters for the passing the IT Warren articles the last couple of years because mm -hmm. that's helping us to really improve the IT infrastructure here. Mm -hmm. And with the <coughs> increased cost of computers and licensing on computers, we haven't been able to absorb it all in our budget, but it's been part of that Warren article. So we're a little behind on our five-year replacement of computers, but not too bad we're going to hopefully get caught up this year that's our goal um, so that we'll be back in line because that was one of the things when i became the finance director slash it and whatever else mm -hmm. hat i might put on in the morning um our goal was to really improve it bring them into yeah. this year you know new website i mean i hope that people have seen some differences that we are making and then mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of differences behind the scene and those two guys uh, paul and dylan are great and do a great job Good. and Good. so hopefully we'll be able to keep moving forward with that. Okay. Any questions there? No. No, you can move on about when the insurance. Yeah, I, oh. I, I do. Okay. The website's really nice. Thank you. It's really great and it's really working out really well. Yes. And there was a lot of complaints about that, weren't they, when, the, when you said you were doing it? There were complaints, yes, yeah. but it's come out very good. Good, I hope. It came out excellent, yeah. excellent, and it's very user friendly. Yeah. And it's it, you update it constantly, I think, which is really nice. The thing I have a question on is uh, staff development. Yes. Uh, Dylan and, and Paul do a great job. Paul and Dylan do a great job. Yes. Uh, are we spending enough on st ta staff development? This we, year we, we have not. Um, last year we did, though. Um, I think. Well, as you can see, that last year we spent twenty five hundred. Mm. We this year we've just had so many projects going on, and with the default budget, we're more cautious as managers to make sure that we get done and have money. And we have to leave money somewhere in case someone else needs it. You know, it's right. all one big. It's a bottom yeah. line budget, and yeah. so I really have held back on IT this year. That's why. We're going to hopefully get our computers and stuff ordered now because mm -hmm. I, sitting where I sit, even though they're a small budget and I'm watching everyone else's budgets that some of them I don't have any control over, but I just feel like yeah. you have to leave money somewhere for a little bit. So 
Um, last year, I can tell you that Paul went to either Texas or Arizona or something to a big, they call them nerdvanas or nerd thing, <laughs> nerd events and stuff. And so he went there. Um, so I think that we're doing a good job. I do touch base with them and pretty much let, allow them to do whatever they feel. You know, there's a Civic Plus one who has our website. Mm -hmm. I just asked Dylan the other day yeah. if he was interested in that. And he was like, no, I'm good for now and stuff. So I think that I would like to leave the money on that line. Um, we did lower it a little <coughs> bit to put it more in line with the averages. Yeah. But I do think that they, I hope that they think that they're available to have and do what they would like to do for staff <coughs> development there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and did you want to move on to the insurance? Sure. So under municipal insurance, I'm going to have the same thing that Amanda from the library had. We do, I think you guys all received, Fred, you gave them the letter with the rate increase for health insurance? I did. Yes. Okay. So health insurance, um, basically when I generated these budgets, we didn't have the health insurance number, so I basically put in what the current cost was to cover all the employees who have the insurance. And now that we have the rates, they went up... Um, 6.1% for health insurance. Of course, I don't know where my health insurance pile went, but and then the dental <laughs> went up three point something, I think. Nine. So the uh, bottom line is that we need to increase um, our health insurance line from, we need to increase it to 2,917,825. dollars in order to cover um, all of the people who are all the positions not people they are positions because right. we have vacant positions but we still budget for them so we will need to make that increase um, the board will need to do that whenever it is that you guys decide that you're going to address that because I know the library needed one I, I know Shirley gave you guys something you can cut from her budget so I can get all those numbers together for you guys if you'd like populate Good. the board of selectmen <coughs> column on the summary sheets and then you guys would have that mm -hmm. to look at because I think it's easier for you to yeah. understand it and if you see the numbers in front of you as opposed to me rattling numbers off to you. So we will need to make an adjustment there. Other than that, um, the insurance is the insurance, little to no control over it. I mean, we have to have right. workers' comp insurance. Yeah. Right. You have to have life insurance as part of everyone's collective bar. I mean, there's nothing in this part, I mean, besides the NHMA dues that, I mean, it's all things that are contractually required, I guess. Yeah. Any questions? No. Seeing none, what about the personnel? So under personnel administration there, you have mostly, let me see if I can find that section. But in that section, you have all of your retirement, um, your Social Security, your Medicare, a lot of things, once again, that are required of us. Of course, I can't find personnel administration. There it is. Um, you have your employee separation cost, your buyback program, those numbers, whatever's left on those lines goes to the compensated absence fund that the trustees hold. However, as you can see this year, we're probably going to barely squeak by with enough between those two lines to cover what we've had for actual. So that's all your, um, for your employee separation is retirement. So if you have a, yeah. ever have any big retirements for like this year, we had Dan Gidley, um, Kennedy at the fire department. There's been a couple yeah, of individuals who have been around a long time. So that eats up those lines. You can see we spent 177,000 already on that line. So, and then the buyback is for both union and non-union. We've talked about that uh, multiple times and that's in regards to selling back sick time or leave time. Um, contractual with your collective bargaining agreements and just something that's been in the personnel policy for your non-union. And then the rest of it is retirement. Uh, there is a tuition reimbursement line added there this year. And then the merit pay raises uh, line is in there again this year too, mm -hmm. which has been in there in the past. Thank you. Any questions? No. Seeing none, we thank you. Okay. Then we have general government buildings. I don't that's, think we put anything exciting in there, did we, Fred? I no. think that's a, it's a singular. A singular. It's not not a plural. We yeah. just have one general government building, um, and those costs continue to go up. I think if you've all seen that in the last two years, we've installed two major heating plants in this building. Yeah. 
there are four more to be replaced and they are slowly but surely wearing out. Uh -huh. So we're going to have some more expenses as we go along in, in keeping this building running, which of course was built in 1970. So it's, it's, it's not exactly brand new and it, we've had a, a significant effort in trying to get things replaced in the building itself. But we yeah. managed to keep it within budget each year Good. I don't know how we do it yet, but uh, we, we're doing it. So uh, we did sign a new custodial contract this year, which is in this budget. Yeah. Uh, that's the first time in, I think, seven years we've actually had a new custodial budget. Mm -hmm. And we are able to keep it at a happy medium. Good. Thank goodness. Uh, so we're pleased they'll be beginning the beginning of next month to clean the building and hopefully we can move forward from there. We still have a lot of replacement work to do in the building. There's carpeting on the first floor in the offices that needs to be replaced, carpeting in the second floor in the offices that needs to be replaced. Uh, the carpeting in the main hall was replaced five years ago, and it's already starting to show excessive yeah. wear. Yeah. Uh, and it's very expensive to replace that carpeting. It's definitely not cheap. Mm. But we're trying to keep the budget as flat as we can and still continue to go on with the process and keep the building cleaned. Uh, we're trying to go back now and redo the woodwork in the building. We'll be doing that the first of next year. As you can see, it becomes stained from people putting their hands on the railing, which is yes. what they're supposed to do. Uh, we also need to paint, to paint the building over again on a, on a gradual basis because the paint is starting to get dingy again. So mm -hmm. uh, that was done by Public Works, and they did a really good job. So the total budget that we're looking for here for this entire line item is, is up 11.226% uh, from 98.881 to 110.014. Some of that has to do with the inspections we're required, we're required to do. Um, we're required to inspect the elevator every month. Yeah. That's expensive to send somebody out here to do that. Uh, if we have... Uh, anytime we have a fire alarm activation, they come back to reinspect the elevator again, so we pay again. Yeah. Uh, okay. We do have the uh, fire systems checked every an annually. All the, uh, the hand extinguishers are changed and certified every year uh, to make sure they're in proper operating condition. Uh, we have a, down here in the back room, we have a uh, sprinkler system, which has to be checked and tested every single year. All those things are expensive, as well as the elevator and certain other things in the building. The HVAC systems are, are always a pain in the neck to do, but they're here because we have to have them because this is a closed building. So, mm -hmm. And we're hoping to keep those expenses within tight bounds if we can. Yeah, and this, this is one of the places I think you clearly excel in, Fred. Uh, it always looks good, and it's a big improvement over what it was in the past, I think. We try. Thank we you. try. Thank you. Mrs. Walsley. Yeah, Fred, I noticed a lot of advertisements on TV for flooring, and I would think that it might be easier if you can get some pretty sturdy, say, wood flooring or whatever, instead of having carpets to deal with that, that could be swept or quick mopped in could we possibly explore that? Well, the problem is that when you have something besides indoor-outdoor carpeting, it requires a lot more effort to keep them clean. Yeah. Oh, it, the carpet is <coughs> the, the carpet easiest carpet collects way. all the stuff. That's right. And we, they vacuum it out with special vacuums. That's why we, you'll notice the floor mats as you come in the front door. Yeah. We change those every single month. Wow. Summer, every, every month of the year. They change yeah. 12 months of the year. Because I was uh, wondering if, we, if you had some of those wooden floors, if you could just take <coughs> you know, a, a mop or a squeegee or something and just... Not, just, not really that simple because no. of the amount of grit that's tracked into this building from oh. a parking lot and the street. And they make people take their shoes off before they come in. Uh, I think that would be a little far reach for us. <laughs> and plus we don't, have a maintenance, we don't have a maintenance person here during the day, so when it's raining and snowing and stuff, you see the people at the grocery yeah. stores like uh, mopping up. I mean, I love wood floors, but I would think here that they would be more of a liability to us because yeah. you'd have to have someone here during the day to... Mop it's up hard. the wet yeah. floors from all the snow. At least it gets yeah. soaked into the disgusting carpet. But oh well. Kind of give you, kind of give you an idea. I mean, we use this hall for lots of things down here. Yeah. The school board uses it for meetings. Right. They'll be using their own building over there soon. But 
Um, we don't have a janitor. Yeah. Which means that the IT people and myself have to go down and reset this room every time there's an activity down there uh, and clean it up because there's just nobody else to do it. Uh, yeah. It's just the way it is. So there's a lot of work that goes on here that you don't see. Mm. Uh, and okay. the carpet is a lot easier to keep clean as long as people don't bring drinks in here and spill them. Because <laughs> yeah. I notice there are starting to be spill spots available again. Yeah. So. And it's easily... Um, it's... The carpet is just so much easier to uh, to clean and to replace, and it's easier on people's feet. Oh, yeah, it is, especially yes. Especially when they're working every day. Replacement, we get this entire room, re as long as the chairs and material are out of here, this entire room is replaced less than a day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, quick. Okay. I have a question about the town office. So we're doing the work out in the parking lot now? We're making that ADA compliant. Okay, and that's all coming out of our current budget? That's all coming out of the current budget. Okay. And are we going to be able to finish that before the... That'll be finished before the snow flies, and we're hoping just another week. Oh, okay. good. Thank so. you. Good. And now we have other safety services, hydrant, street lights, oh, and yes. lifeguards. Mr. Welch? Uh, those are expensive, except for lifeguards, where there's just $1 because we don't have lifeguards at this point. <laughs> Street lighting, as you know, we're replacing all the street lights in town with the exception of the original ones that we owned, which are down on Highland and, yeah. and Church Street. Uh, so that bill, will you'll see that slowly go down in the future Good. because we're going to uh, new type of lighting that will cost much less. Good. Hydrants is going to go up, and, and the, the, the funds that you see in there, the 507916, will be okay as long as there's no wicker charge. Every mm -hmm. year you'll notice this goes up because there's a wicker charge. Yeah. And we don't know what that is until after the budget's approved. Ah. So we just we just pay it, and, and that's that's the way it is. But that basically is for all the fire hydrants that we have in town, and they're rental because they belong to Aquarium. And mm -hmm. there is a rate for it approved by the Public Utilities Commission. That's it. That's it. Yeah, any questions? <coughs> Excuse Regina? me. I have a question on lights, but it might be a Christy question. Yeah. <laughs> On the uh, capital outlays, we still have 123000 for the LED project, I think. Yes. Is so that the warrant from the September from the, financials? Yeah. Yep. yep. So that is going to be... I think it's an ongoing project. I believe we had to yes. make a deposit of a certain percentage when they started, and then the balance we is did. due at the end. Right, and, and they're estimating they'll be finished before the end of the year. Oh, my okay. gosh. That's amazing. That's so, good. Yeah, Thank but we you. definitely made, like, a, I think it was, like, 50% or whatever, and then we have another right. payment at the end. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And the last okay. one was the... It will yeah. save us a ton of money. Yeah. yeah. Patriotic it should be better quality uh, purposes, too. flower gardens. It's the exact Patriotic same Patriotic purposes, those are the flags that are placed in the veterans' graves and the cemeteries. Uh, and the flower gardens, uh, actually, we really don't spend an awful lot of money on flower gardens, but... When the uh, the different uh, garden societies, uh, the garden club in particular, yeah. does work around the town hall and some of yeah. the other town areas. Uh, if they put in money because they want to buy something special, we simply pay for it out of that account. Yeah. It's just a few hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Any questions on that? No. Good. Good stuff. Thank you. That concludes uh, the budget discussion for this evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Percy. Next, we move on to the town manager's report. Mr. Welch. Now you wait just a second, Mr. Chairman. I'll yeah. put all this paperwork away if we can get that done so we can get out of here. Do you want to <laughs> have so Renee come up for his? Yeah, that's fine. If you want to come sure. up. What are we? Please come up. Oh, down there. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, yes, we could have done that before. I didn't yeah. realize either topic was still up. Um, I just wanted to ask on the agenda it says to waive the fee for the uh, food truck vendors yes. being it was our first year doing it we um, didn't realize there was as in-depth paperwork involved yeah. and we requested these people to come to our event yeah. so I felt that a $250 fee to, to yeah. make that happen was a little a little um, yeah. much so going forward when we do it again I yeah. think we would approach it a little differently but being our first time yeah. with the application process and the communication we've got from the vendors they yeah. they said the the paperwork on our end was 
more than they've seen in other towns, and that two hundred and fifty dollar okay. fee was actually more than they spend for the state fee for the year. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm so make a motion. We waive the fee. Yes. Yeah, second. It. Okay. Good. In favor. For town events. Yes. Is this what you're talking about? For the Halloween well, fest, right? Yeah. yeah. Halloween fest. So we're only talking about yeah. town events. We're yeah. not talking about other food tracks. I'm in favor. I'm voting. We had a motion, so I'm voting. We do first and a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm sorry. I Don't thought you were just having me. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking really for old faces. <laughs> yeah, he was here just for you, yeah. Let's go here. Yeah. It's getting late. Mrs. Wolseley, would yes, you please sir. relax and not comment on every little thing? Why not? Okay. Yeah, you're delaying everything, actually. Um, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, their contractor has moved in and their dredging equipment in place. And I met down there today with Senator Shaheen, uh, who mm -hmm. came down with her staff, Good. along with the people from, from Seabrook at the uh, Fishing Cooperative. Uh, they are, in fact, starting the dredging of the harbor. They have cleaned out the entrance area to the Seabrook Harbor and placed all that material where at the at the uh, southwest side of the bridge Ooh. that was we were having problems with our lines that were exposed. They're now covered completely, oh. so that area is really filled in. There's a, hmm. a few thousand cubic yards of material in there they put in there in a day or so. They are doing uh, Seabrook Harbor at the moment. Uh, they're pl placing the material on what's known as middle ground, which is the clam beds. Hmm. So that's that's um, going forward. They're telling us that completion will be in February 2020 for the entire project, hmm. which is, wow. they may actually finish sooner than that. It just depends on a whole series of different things that not, are not quite in evidence at this point. Uh, work continues. Uh, to progress well on the second phase of the culvert replacement on Park Avenue. I uh, want to just remind people that detours are there during the day at some points in times uh, so they can go through and complete the work. Please be careful the contractors, employees, and we have equipment in the roadway. They're now in the process of cleaning up. Hopefully mm -hmm. they'll be out of there and Park and Recreation, we can get the uh, Kids Kingdom back up and, yeah, and work in order. Uh, in that same respect, Aquarion is continuing the operation to uh, install a water main on Route 101 at Church Street. They're pretty close to the end, uh, but they do have a lot of equipment working in the roadway with yeah. a lot of men, so please be careful down that area. They're very active today. They're trying to close that site up. Uh, Aquarian will also shortly begin the replacement of a water main on Mill Road between Mace and Barbara Roads. If at all possible, please use alternate routes for your travel to avoid the anticipated long shutdown delays for traffic. Mm -hmm. The construction will begin, will, will be in progress for every workday, Monday through Saturdays each week until mm -hmm. the project is completed or it's shut down for winter. Good. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, okay. questions for the town manager's, manager's report, Mr. Waddell? No. Mrs. Wolseley. So, um, Fred, can we correct the spelling uh, Aquarian ends with O N, oh, not I, A N. I didn't type it. But I'll say no, no, I, I know that, that. <laughs> but I noticed a lot of the recent oh, yeah. ones. But it is an O N. Yeah. And I hope that replacing on, not Ann. <laughs> replacing the water main on Mill Road will slow down the traffic. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Well, actually, it's going to slow it down a lot more than we think because they're going to be working on one half of the roadway. So Good. it may be that one half of the roadway is shut down almost permanently. Good. Slow them down over there. Regina. Yeah, the Army Corps, I was there this morning as well with uh, the town manager and the deputy town manager, and it was uh, very nice to see them doing work in the harbor. So... And That's I exciting. thank the senator for coming and uh, making sure they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. <clears throat> She's been uh, really a godsend to us. Yeah. Without her, we would not have been able to obtain the money to do this work. Wow. That's she went good. right to bat for us, 100%. That's she good. She seems to be very influential in Washington today. Yeah. She is. Um, there was a lot of flack from the Army Corps, the Army Corps about doing this on such short notice. And she went right down and went after the uh, three-star general that runs that operation. And <laughs> I love man, it. it went sailing right through Congress, and the president signed it. So uh, it was a wonderful work. And the, her staff, she and her staff really 
did a lot of work along with our other senator who was right there helping her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so great. they really did a good job. Great. <laughs> um, so moving on to old business, Mrs. Wolsey? No. I, well, no, I just want to see. Mr. Waddell? I, no. I have something. I yeah. thought she was still talking. Um, the transfer station, I've gotten some, because of the big storm right. this past week, uh, people didn't make it down on Sunday morning in time, mm -hmm. and they're quite upset. And this is, I'm, I've been talking to groups of all ages. They think that 8 to 11.30 on Sunday is an unacceptable, and if we could either move the time to later, or perhaps since we seem to have some money left over in the budget, maybe we should think about opening the transfer station up again. Mm -hmm for the full time on yeah. Sunday. So I know Public Works is gonna be in next week, but mm -hmm. I wanted to put this out there because I've had several people reach out to me and after that storm, some of them weren't able to get there on Sunday and they yeah. were pretty upset about okay. it. Let's put that on the agenda for not next week, but the following week. Yeah. I agree we'll with do. Regina. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other old business? Uh, seeing none, we will go to new business. Number one is we the waiver that. of application fees, which we just did. Mm -hmm. yep. Number two is award of the uh, bid 2019-0111 landfill monitoring to Hydro Geochemical Solutions. This, this was a bid, Mr. Chairman. There was more than the required bidders, uh, so we don't need a waiver on this, but the bid tabulation, uh, Hydro Geo... Geochemical Solutions Incorporated of Barrington, New Hampshire was the low bidder uh, on this particular project and we would recommend that the yeah. board award it to them. Yeah, make I the also, oh, I also move. Okay, we have a first by Mr. Waddell and a second by yeah. Mrs. Wolsey. How much, All was, those, how much yeah. was the bid for? The bid was for da -da, da -da, $30,300. Yeah, that's good. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous? Yeah, really. Moving on to the acceptance of the New Hampshire DOT SALT bid. Mr. Chairman, this is an acceptance of a statutory SALT bid, a bid out by the state of New Hampshire. We're, we're sort of piggybacking on them, which is provided for in state statute. Good. Uh, we're talking about the cost of $67,086. Uh, since it is a state bid, we don't, we don't need a waiver because it's only one bid. Mm -hmm. We are going right on with a state bid state bid so Mr. we recommend your acceptance Mr. Mr. Chairman also move that we accept the New Hampshire DOT salt bid second all those in favor unanimous next we have the SAU 90 cable channel funding request for 2019 Mr. Welch Mr. Chairman they have sent to us uh, through the office of the superintendent a request for um, $28,000 for the program coordinator and $8,000 for equipment. As you may remember, uh, in the previous year we had $37,000 for the um, coordinator and $60,300 for equipment. And, and we gave you both, both costs. That's all they need. Apparently they, they purchased most of the equipment last year. No, but I mean the other one, the uh, coordinator. Um, 60,300 versus $37,000, is that right? No, I think it's- No, 28,000 yeah. versus uh, 37,000. They've got it down to 42, 42 weeks at 20 hours. Uh, represents 1.75% cost of living included. So it's $8,000 for the, uh, the individual, uh, $28,000 total for the program coordinator. So it's gone up a little bit uh, but the hours have gone down. Okay. And this is what exactly what the what the cable franchise mm -hmm. fee is for to 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 fund two channels, channel thirteen it's, and channel twenty two. Right. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wolsey. Uh, I object. I think that the uh, school should be funding its own expenses at this point in time. It's, it's cable cable channel cable franchise fee. That's exactly what it's for. Well, I'm not gonna I understand what the funds for it has two hundred and eighty one thousand almost two hundred and eighty two thousand dollars in it and we I guess have we heard from the federal government as far as the federal government has postponed a decision. <laughs> okay, so there's been no changes as no far change. as change. But not at this point. 
My concern is the feedback that I get from town is the people that are contributing to this fund aren't getting what they would like to right. get from it. Right. So I really think this is something that we need to address in the future because we don't know where cable's going to go. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. 255000 Now I see they need to, I mean, I'm going to approve this because they need to have a program coordinator, but, you know, asking for money and us just giving it to them Mm -hmm. maybe needs to stop, especially if we're not going to have access to all these fees anymore, because I'll tell you right now, the people that are paying the fees don't even want to have Comcast anymore because of, uh, and there's no other option. Well, the sooner they drop it, the better it will be, and they'll right. save money. So we need I to maybe motion, not rely on I make it a as motion much as that we, we do. approve this. Okay, second. All those in favor? Against? Mrs. Wilsey is opposed, and the rest are for. Um, any other Sorry. new business? Mrs. Wolsey? No, I'm just waiting for the discussion on the rail trail. Regina? Um, yes, under new business. Uh, when Public Works is in for their budget next week, I will be bringing up some questions on the uh, April report of the uh, finest kind brewing. So I yeah. wanted to uh, warn yeah. Public Works on that. That's all I have. Make a motion to adjourn at 2125. Uh, I have a, oh. a closing comment, and I just want to make sure that um, about putting those two things that I mentioned on the agenda for They'll be on the, agenda, the following week. Yep. Okay. I'll second Mr. Waddell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Whew. Thank you, gentlemen, for. Thank you, channel.